Hello everybody, welcome to Memorial Field for the 115th meeting of the Needham Rockets and the Wellesley Raiders. Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Ardini, joined as always by Ben Mark and coming from Wellesley, Mr. Chris, Chris Stevens. Chris Stevens, man. <laughs> it's great to have you with us here. What could be better than snow on the field? It's a frozen tundra out here. We've imported it here from Green Bay and it should really be a great game today. Both teams feature a strong running game now, but they definitely have distinctive styles. Ben, you want to tell us about the Needham running attack? Yes, uh, they're going to run a power eye most of the time. You'll see two tight ends. It'll be Venti and Frank Andrews. This team really just, just they don't want to pass. It's simple. Against Newton North, they attempted one shovel pass. That was it. And they ended up dominating the Newton North interior defense. Now, I don't know too much about the Wellesley defense, Chris, but uh, are they going to be able to stop uh, Walker and Smith today? Well, Walker and Smith are just two really exciting runners, and when you run 55 times in one game against Newton North, as they did, you know you got a lot of confidence in your running game. Now, the Wellesley defense is a little bit banged up, okay? They do feature an undersized defense. They're quick. They have to try to really fill the gaps against uh, Gatto, against Walker, and against Smith. So I look for the Raiders to probably do a lot of stunting, do some different things to try to be able to offset a very, very powerful and impressive Needham offense. Now, one thing that uh, Needham had in trouble with last year was that wing T running offense of the Wellesley Raiders. Chris, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the wing T offense is real, a lot of misdirection. You have all the linemen blocking, nobody really right in front of them but they're able to, uh, to do a lot of different things out of the wing tee. Now, a slippery field really plays well for Needham. Uh, the slippery field makes it very, very difficult for the wing tee offense to be able to, uh, to, to cut. A 115th meeting between the Needham Rockets and the Wellesley Raiders. Now, of course, this game has great implications for both teams, just being a Thanksgiving game, of course, but for Needham, this game even has playoff implications, standing at 7-3, and three, a three-way tie with Newton North and Weymouth. Now, it's really been an interesting season for the Rockets, similar to last year in that they got off to a slow start, started off 2-3, and three, had a loss to Framingham, who's at the bottom of the carry division right now, but came back strong. They've won five in a row, and they're in a strong position right now. Yeah, you look at that Framingham loss, that one really hurt. It was a close game, 10-7 to seven loss. But uh, just back to the uh, playoff picture right now, I talked to some of the players this week, and uh, last year they just lost focus. Uh, they had the playoff spot secure, I think. I mean, they, they looked like the better team throughout the season, but when uh, these teams get together, records are just thrown out the window. Well, the Needham Rockets have had a tough Thanksgiving dinner for the last four years, and none of these seniors here have had a chance to walk off of this field victorious. And it was interesting because in the JV contest this year, the freshman it was a terrific game. The Raiders won the freshman game 14-13. to 13. But in the JV game, you could really see the spirit of this town and this team come behind it. And I really look this year for the Needham Rockets to come out with a lot more aggressiveness and enthusiasm uh, than last year. As you said, it's all on the line here. If Newton North loses, if Weymouth uh, loses, and if these guys win, man, they're going to the big show again. Exactly. Now, Wellesley, again, not having the best year injuries have really hurt their season, currently standing at 4-6. and six. You hate to think about what could have been done had there not been so many injuries on the squad. Well, they did have a lot of injuries this year, and you know it's kind of interesting because you all, you know, absolutely whitewashed uh, uh, Newton North. We did too. You know, we beat Framingham. You didn't. So when you go, you know, try to compare teams versus teams, you really don't get a good true value of what these teams are all about. When the Wellesley offense is clicking and they mix up their plays, they can be very, very dangerous. They've had a lot of long touchdown runs this year. Adam Spencer had a 90-yard punt return last week. Uh, he had a 75-yard touchdown run. So if they get outside, this team can be very, very dangerous. The difficult the difficulty is, as you pointed out, is that they've had quite a few injuries in some key positions. They will be without Wes Woodake, their kicker, uh, today. Chris Geeka has a bad knee. He may play a little bit. Uh, Chris DeAngelis, the middle linebacker and the offensive guard, may be out of this contest as well. So the Raiders are going to be undersized and undermanned, but they will not be underspirited. Exactly. The field right now looks kind of icy. It could be very hard for both teams to try to get outside. So right there, starting off an advantage for Needham, just trying to pound it off the gut of the defensive line. We got to give uh, the guys who worked on this field today a lot of credit because it looks a lot better than it did yesterday. Um, it's very, very slippery though. Those sidelines, if you can see, there it's white stuff down there. That's not just snow. That's ice as well. It is very slippery. I was down there earlier, and guys like Jeff Smith, who love to work the outside of the field, are going to have trouble today. And uh, I don't know about. Who likes to go outside for uh, Wellesley? Is O-Bang an outside runner? Or is no, O-Bang will probably bang it up inside. He's okay. a tough fullback, but you get Guile and Spencer. 
and watch number 36 and 24. They're going to try to get outside a lot. And again, you may see Wilsey try to do a lot of misdirection. In fact, I know that Needham's going to do some misdirection because I saw some of the powder puff game yesterday, and the Needham girls were unbelievable. They ran a triple option yesterday. They went for a long touchdown. So i got to believe Coach Dave Duffy is going to pull all, everything he can out of the bag to beat Wellesley this year. Wellesley seniors are being introduced here at the ice-covered uh, Memorial Field. I'm Andrew Ardini, joined by Ben Mark and Chris Stevens for the 115th meeting of the Needham Rockets. Wellesley Captain Raiders. Yeah, just a quick announcement. We'll get those Needham highlights in at halftime. We don't have enough time as the game's about to get underway. Yeah, I just also want to get, since you're in the process of introducing the seniors and the Wellesley seniors, really want to kind of pay tribute to those kids. Number 54, Greg Diamond, a co-captain. Number 55, Andrew Ellsworth. Number 78, Mike Quigley. Number 62, Chris DeAngelis. Number 74, Tyler Hansmeyer. Number 50, uh, let's see, number 36 is soon. Uh, no, number 32, Eric Obang. Number 24, Adam Spencer. And number 11, Frank Kaluska. Seen us from this Wellesley team looking to put fifth, sixth win in a row. Fifth win in a row, I'm sorry, for the Wellesley Raiders. Try to open up the gap in their season series lead. The crowd continues to file in here on a very cold and blustery Thanksgiving morning. We just also pay uh, tribute to a couple of other seniors because the brook was actually not right. Number 27, Chris uh, Lindsay, is also a senior. Number 28, Chris Geeka, is a senior. Number 21, Tommy Lakin. Number 76, Ronnie Slayman. Number 26, Tris Trip Murphy. Number 84, Wes Woodacre, and the trainer who's done such a great job for the Raiders, Josh Ganey. That'll do it for the Raiders introduction. Now we'll go for their hometown Needham Rockets squad today. Before that, they're going to introduce the cheerleaders, one of the national qualifying cheerleading squads. Really an unbelievable job the last couple of years by this cheerleading team. First appearances in the national appearances ever for the Needham High School. Really a whole range of sports here. Ashley Both of these schools brewing well here at the state Ballard and Ray at Ford. the national level. Some of the seniors, Diana Simitelli, Aaron Caveni, uh, Emily Griffith, Katie Farka, Ashley O'Hare, Paula Raffol, and Erica Chase. Those ladies have done a great job, and I think they are the defending Bay State champions. Aren't they? Yeah, they're, they, they do an excellent job. Made the trip down to Florida last year. Didn't exactly finish in the top ten in the country, but still making it to Disney World and the national championships is quite an achievement in its own. And Keaton is their second year as captain, I believe, for that uh, cheerleading team. That's right. The Rock is about to uh, bust out. There they go. There's the three captains for the Rocket squad. Brian Davis, starting quarterback Jamie Walker, starting tailback. And Andrew Brecker, anchor both the offensive and defensive line for the Rockets. And these, these guys, these three are just so excited for this game. Jimmy Walker said there's nothing better than representing your town and your family on Thanksgiving Day. And I mean, they, 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 they know this tradition. They know what's going on in this rivalry. I think everyone on both teams do. Well, I saw uh, Dick Carey did a terrific article in the Needham tab relative to the history of this traditional rivalry and all the families, the fathers who played here, the, you know, the, the cousins, the grandfathers who played here. And you know, as you guys pointed out, there's all bets are off when it comes to Thanksgiving Day. And even on a frozen field, I remember when we were here two years ago, it was just as cold as it was today. And uh, so there's always upsets, there's always a lot of fun. But what I love about this program, I don't think I've ever seen really bad blood on the field or off the field on Thanksgiving Day. It's always a real clean cut, hard fought rivalry. And even though they're so far off, they really do respect each other and their seasons and their players. I mean, of course, they want to see their team win, but it's, 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 like you said, it's really not a bad blood rivalry. It's really just rivalry in the spirit of the sport, spirit of the town, spirit of the history. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but there are a couple of schools, though, whenever Wolsey seems to play, it just seems to sometimes get a lot, you know, let, get ugly sometimes, but it's not that way between these two programs. a lot of respect for each other. Now, we talked a little bit about uh, the fact that you know, Wellesley runs a wing T offense. And, and with Needham, with the size that they have, they really have such terrific size up front with Brecker. And, and they got a lot of speed with guys like Cormac Harkins and, and, and Callahan. I mean, when, when they get it going on the running game, I mean, they just chew up all kinds of yardage. 
Yeah, you'll see that out of this Needham team. When they get going, there's no stopping them. We saw that against Brookline especially. This Brookline team just had no chance. They ran over them. They had the ball, I believe, 11 out of 12 in the first minutes of the game. And if, if you get tired on the defensive side, you got to watch out because this Needham squad is just going to run over you all day. The great, the great thing about their running game is that if one guy is doing a bulk of the running, they can bring somebody else in. In that Brookline game, Jimmy Walker was hurt after the first quarter. We thought he was just taking a rest after he had 100 and I think 17 yards in the first quarter. But uh, they took him out, they brought Jeff Smith in, and Jeff Smith rushed for 160. So there, there have been times they've looked all but invisible. Well, I think, you know, what you may also see today is I think you're going to see some passing. I mean, Brian Davis has hooked up with Steve Sees with some great touchdowns this year. And, uh, you know, again, with, uh, you know, Frank Aluska back at quarterback in, the, in a couple of games under his belt now, he's a great drop back passer. And the wide receivers will have the advantage here on a slippery field. They know where they're going to go and the defense has to react. So I look for some short passes out of the backfield. And don't forget the tight ends. The tight ends could be key today. Tight ends big in both offenses. Uh, Frank Anders from the Needham side. Uh, had a big 50-yard game-winning touchdown reception against Milton a couple weeks ago. So you may you may see that uh, passing offense, but at least from the Needham side, from experience, don't expect that to come out unless they get behind. Well, we talked a bit about the you know the fact that that these teams always have a good rivalry between the two of each other, but you know the Needham Wellesley Pop Warner program has really produced a tremendous amount of talent, and a lot of these kids play together. I know that Jamie Walker and uh, my son Casey Stevens were on the same team along with. Uh, Cormac uh, Hawkins was on that, Matt Hoban was on it, uh, some of the other guys that were on the team as well. And again, some of the kids are in private school. you got guys like Darren Gavin, uh, Gallup at, at Belmont Hill that scored seven touchdowns in one game, and Alex Nickenberger, and then you got some guys on at St. Seb. So these two towns have produced a lot of talent that have led to Eastern Massachusetts football. And it's fitting that they, play, that they play with each other, and now they're in the biggest games, for, at least for the seniors, of their career. Man, Brecker's imposing out there. Well, he really starts no lineman that's more than, uh, I guess uh, Tyler Hansmeyer would be the one lineman who's a pretty big guy, but uh, I remember Brecker last year, and, uh, and the kid is just a, a quality player. He really is. He's not only got the size, he's got a little bit of quickness in his step as well, and he plays good on both the defensive interior and offensive line. And they run the ball to his side almost all the time. I know me and Andrew, have done a few, Andrew and I have done a few games this year, and they're just going to use that, I think it's the right side of the offense? Usually right, it's the right side, yeah. The right side of the offense. That's where they're going to run a lot of their plays. Sweeps and off tackle to the right side. Well, you know, the last three years where Wellesley has been victorious, the fullback for Wellesley has been absolutely critical. Obang had a big game uh, last year. And then you had, uh, you see the teams getting ready out there. And, uh, you know, the kids before that uh, had a big, big game as well. So, uh, I, I, again, we'll see when that Dave Dubber really kind of shuts down the inside so that they can, because it's going to be difficult for kids to run outside today. So as teams prepare on the field, take a quick look at the starting lineups from both teams. But first, we on America by the South Bend Banner. by the new high school marching band today. So to prepare for the kickoff, let's take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to kickoff, we'd like to 
Starting with Needham. Ryan Davis will start at quarterback. There he is warming up. Jamie Walker, Greg Gatto will be your backfield today. Frank Andrews is starting at tight end. We've got a starting lineup with a couple wide receivers. Don't be surprised to see Brendan Venti in there a lot. Drew Cofield will be starting where I see your Steve C's at split end. And then, of course, the offensive line of Callahan, Fox, Brecker, uh, Harkins. It looks like Needham is one of the, the toss here, and they're going to be receiving. Needham going uh, from left to right on your screen in their traditional blue. And uh, what color is it? Is that gold? That would be gold, yes. Special teams are just so a critical part of these kind of games. We'll see what happens right here at the beginning. Needham was blessed with some great special teams this year from the kicking side, from the punting side, and from the receiving side. You got Jamie Walker and Steve C's back right now. This how Bank put some kickoffs very deep. Warm ups, we'll see how he does here. This was in a high short kick. It's coming down, lands, gonna be bounce. Not out of bounds, Walker dives on it. Smart play by Walker, because that was a little free ball over there in the near side. Yeah, that was a pooch kick by Obang. He threw it up in the air and it's down about the 22 yard line. So the Raiders did what they wanted to do was to not have the long run back, but you could even see there how gingerly Walker was trying to go up to the ball. Uh, it's gonna be real, real tough sledding out there today. These guys had better have skates on. <laughs> see Walker pouncing on the ball just before it goes out of bounds there. So the Rockets will start. Looks like right on the 20 yard line. Not exactly the best field position. We'll see what the Rockets can do. Field position could be important today. It's been important all year, and in high school football in general, it's very important to get the ball, you know, 60 yards, 65 yards out, and they're 80 yards away right now. Well, we interestingly, again, the Raiders going with no free safety here. Handoff goes to Walker up the middle, breaks a tackle, and falls up to the 26-yard line. A good start for Jamie Walker. Let right me set the road. defense here a little bit for the Wells Raiders, if I could, please. Uh, going across the front line there, you've got. Uh, uh, at the end position, uh, Greg Diamond, number 54, along with Eric uh, Obang, number 32, Tyler Hansmeyer in the middle there, along with number 55, Eric, uh, or rather Andrew Ellsworth. You got a sophomore middle linebacker there, Connor Stevens, number 50, along with Julian Turner, Chris Guile, and Chris Geek are your outside linebackers. We'll set the rest in a minute. Second and three, Needham goes back into the power eye position. Walker having a little trouble get going, and he's tripped down at the 25-yard line. Loss of two on the play. Well, it's a sophomore in there. Stevens with a really good hit in the backfield. It looked like he was able to get pretty good traction there. So, dropped it for the loss. It'll set about, what, about third and six or so. You can tell there, Jamie Walker, it seems like he's, you know, just trying to take baby steps. And that's the way it's going to be today with almost everyone. If you take a look at the replay here, he couldn't really get going. And that's going to be it's going to be a problem all day. I think you know it's gotta it's, teams are gonna have to do misdirection here today to really get somebody open. He stays in the power right, third and six. Steve sees on the near side, two tight ends, Venti and Andrews. Gatto and Walker in the backfield. Cofield comes in motion. Davis fakes, looks to throw. Now he keeps it. He's got some room he's and he's gonna get a first down. Still going up to the 40-yard line. First down, Brian Davis, big we, run. We have seen Brian, Brian Davis, Davis in the, the past few weeks against Newton North, down, especially just run that Adam option Spencer. very, very well, something that he wasn't known for in the beginning of the season. He's got some speed, and he got a good hole there. Well, the key thing on the option is that each guy in the defense has got to take a specific guy, and you got to stay with that guy irrespective of what you see. You see Davis kind of rolling out here, getting a good lead block there. He makes his cut nicely, and you see the outside guy does stay with his man, which allows Davis to cut it up back inside for the first down. Davis had no problem there. Nobody really picked him up, which was what got him to spring loose. So the Rockets move up to the 41-yard line, first and 10, with 10.29 to go here in the first quarter. Wide receiver, far side, handoff goes to Walker right up the middle. Good no stick. No room at all. Wow, good again, good stick by Stevens there. Stevens, a sophomore at only 150 pounds at middle linebacker. Showing that he's ready to play today, and that was uh, Jamie Walker, just one of the premier backs in Eastern Massachusetts. You know he's going to get on track today, though. There it is, right up the middle. Walker tried to pound it up the gut, but Stevens, middle linebacker, gave him no room at all, no gain on the play. Maybe half a yard. It's second and a long nine. Field on the near side. Frank Andrews and Brendan Venti switch positions on the tight ends. Stay in the somewhat power eye position. Davis hands off, flag on the play. Jeff Smith with the carry. He tackles for only about a game of one. 
Again, a good job there by the Raiders of holding the line there. It looked like there might have been some motion on the offensive side of the ball, but sophomore Mike Stone, number four, coming up and making the hit. Again, Coach Bill Tracy looking to change up defenses a little bit, sometimes coming with a free safety and sometimes not. Well, there is a false start call, pushing them back even farther. And just quickly back to Brian Davis. This is his second time, second uh, go around here in this Needham Wellesley football game. He's got the experience. Walker in the backfield has the experience. Brecker on the line. These guys know what it's all about. And I don't know. Just has Wellesley? Uh, all these guys. A lot of these guys have played in this game before. Well, you got a lot of young guys here. 53. To the, the two starting middle linebackers are 53. Turner, a sophomore, and 50. Stevens, a sophomore, and the free safety is a sophomore. So this is a very, very young team. Across the front line, though, a lot of the guys have been here before. Flag was a legal motion declined by Wellesley. Brings up a third down and long to go for the Rockets. Coming in motion is Cofield to the near side. Two tight ends. Davis takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right. Looking, looking at his incomplete. He's looking for Frank Andrews over the middle of the field. Was a little behind him. Raiders getting a good job of penetrating there, forcing Davis to throw that a little bit faster than he wanted to. Uh, 54 diamond. Uh, in there along with 53 Turner and uh, again the, the Wellesley defense very very active here forcing the, the the Rockets to kick it away they should get decent field position so Chris Bavisaris will go back to punt one of the best punters in the Bay State League he's pulled off some 40 plus punts with regularity here this year Alex Garlic is your long snapper Raiders will be looking into the sun here it's a good snap Bavisaris with the low line and kick not a very good kick at all that's a shank for him and that's only going to go about 10, 12 yards. So he's got to be disappointed with that one. Well, it's just so tough to get the footing out there. And uh, again, Pavisaris, who's had such a wonderful career here at Needham, uh, you know he's going to boom some today if he has a chance to do it again. Just that one got, he kind of hooked that a little bit. It looked like a sandwich. It got out of, uh, out of control. As you see there, 9.13 to go here in the 115th matchup of these teams. And as Wellesley comes out on the field, take a quick look at the Wellesley offense. Frank Kaluska leads the team out there today. He's back from an injury just to play in this game. Uh, looks like the wide receivers lined up offside. He better back up. The referee's not going to tell him, and he's not going to call it either. Nice wrap-up tackle. Right up the middle, no gain at all. And that was number 45. That's Doug Schwartz. Schwartz with a good tackle there, setting that offensive lineup for the Raiders. Number 11, Frank Aluska, co-captain, is the uh, quarterback. Number 32, Eric Obang, is the fullback. 24, Adam Spencer. 36, Chris Guile are your tailbacks. And across your front line, you got 74, Tyler Hansmeyer. 54, Diamond is a center. And uh, Julian Turner, 53, is a guard. Andrew Ellsworth is a guard. Chris Geek is your tight end, number 43. No gain on the play. Second and 10 from their own 48, the Raiders. 15 dollars a wide receiver. Jet sweep right. Handoff goes to the man in motion, falls down. Looks like he got tripped up by his own guy, Haleska. So it's just going to be so hard to run that way. I mean, they're really going to have to do some misdirection. It's going to be tough to get outside. Man, that was that, guiled that time for a loss of four. And as you know, in high school football, when your knees down, your knees down. And uh, it is going to be very slippery. So that could be a problem today with uh, gaining yards. If the guy falls down, there you go. Loss of yards right there. Well, one of the challenges of the Wellesley offense this year is that they've been very predictable. When the wingback goes fast in motion, he almost always gets the ball. When he goes slow in motion, it either goes to the fullback or it's what they call a waggle. But uh, that time it was a loss. Good play by uh, Schwartz. Third down and 14. See if the Wellesley offense goes to the air here early. It's fumble. Fumble on the play. Rockets, I think, have got it. Looks like Referee Jared Freed might have pounced on it. Nope. No signal. Looks yeah, like I think the Rockets have position. it. No, I, th Wellesley I think Wellesley did recover it. So we take a look there again. The ball scoring. Yeah, that's definitely Wellesley. I think actually Haleska picked it back up. But anyway, that's a waste of third down. They lose a couple more yards. It's fourth down. And now Wellesley off to punt. I think it's safe to say this is going to be a field position battle. We predicted it, and now it's, we're starting to see it right here. Chris Gal, you doing the kicking responsibilities, gets a good bounce, huh? Excellent Ex bounce. Here comes Haggerty. Haggerty Jimmy. back to receive the punt today. Haggerty returned one for a touchdown in the uh, JV game against New uh, against uh, Wellesley just a week ago. It was a beautiful return of about 85 yards. That was so. a gorgeous one. That was the deciding one because the JV actually won that game 14 to 8. But uh, you see there, Jimmy Nelson, number 30, the sophomore on the special teams, driving him out of bounds there. But, uh, you know, when it comes to field position in this kind of game, if you play the field position and then get the turnover, that's what you're really looking for in this kind of a difficult condition. So even though the punt only went about 12, 15 yards in the air, 
ends up being a 32-yard punt, bouncing out of bounds at around the 20-yard line. That's where the Rockets will set up shop again with 7-10 to go here in the first quarter. Needham stays in their power eye position. Cofield is the wide receiver near side. Handoff goes to Walker up the middle, falls forward near the 25-yard line. Good job there by Obang, number 32, a plug in the gap. And uh, again, Jamie Walker, who might normally on that kind of a run, Ben, he would have kicked that outside, but he just can't cut. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy to get your footing today. It doesn't matter what you're wearing for cleats. And uh, we'll see, Je I mean, Jeff Smith, who's been just an unbelievable back this year, might have a little bit of trouble today. He loves to go to the outside. Well, you can bet defensive coordinator for the Raiders, uh, John Griffiths, is telling his guys, just make sure you seal the outside, you'll get help inside. Second and five, Gatto, Walkers. Now even farther back in the backfield, try to get some kind of speed. Hand up goes to the short man, Gatto up the middle, pounding his way. He did not get much on that carry. Gatto's been a force the last couple of games. He has been. Uh, Greg Gatto, the reason why, when I asked Coach Duffy, how come Greg Gatto's getting 40, 50 yards a game? He said, well, everyone's kicking on Smith and Walker. What do you, I mean, what do you expect? Gatto's going to get the spotlight and he shines. He's just an unbelievable competitor. He's got family history in this game, family history you know, in lots of sports in this town. Harvard Yale, the big game, Dave. We know all about the Gattos. And Greg Gatto, these guys, he was part of that, uh, that great Pop Warner team. Davis hands it off to Walker. He's got a big hole. That's a first down for the Rockets. Check that Jeff Smith checked in for third down. And maybe Smith won't have a lot of trouble today. I mean, sure, it's just one run, but he looked pretty good there. He was slipping a little bit. But Jeff Smith, a lot of people don't realize that he can go up the middle as well. And uh, he's, he's going to be an unbelievable back next year. Just looking at him now and seeing what a, what a preview of what's to come next year when he's the feature back in this offense. That uh, was uh, actually number 41. Uh, Gustavo Medina with the tackle there. Now Medina is actually playing the tight end position as well as de defensive tackle number 41. Davis under center, winning a first and 10 snap here for the Rockets at the 33 yard line. Davis gives it to the short oh, man. Gatto, he's got a big hole, pounds his way up near the 40. That's a big chunk of yardage after that first down play. Well, when your free safety is making the tackle number four, Mike Stone, you know that the offensive line have done their job. And the need of offensive line looks like they're starting to find some rhythm here. Well, as you said before, Chris, uh, the what need of offensive line just outsizes that healthy defensive play, line. Who Mike knows, it could Stone. end up wearing them down and uh, later in the game. They've done, they've done a pretty nice job so far. Got him marked down at the 41. It's a gain of about six. Needham will not get out of that formation that's been so successful on this drive. Handoff goes to Walker. He's got a hole. That's another first down for the Rockets nearing midfield and finally dragged down across midfield. Jamie Walker pushing his way through that Wellesley defense for another first down. Boy, that's vintage Jamie Walker, isn't it? This is Needham ball control offense right here. This is what they like to run. As, as we said earlier, they're going to control the clock most of the first quarter if they get that opening kickoff. They went they went three and out, was it? Or they might have picked up a first down. The first drive as we take a look at the uh, take a look at the replay. Well, what's impressive about this offensive drive is they're going left, they're going right. The coach Dave Duffy really mixing it up nicely. Callahan and Fox with an excellent push on the left side that time. It's Davis under center for another first down play. Head up goes up to Gatto up the middle, falls forward, across the 45 for a gain of about three. The problem for Greg Gatto in that new North game that we got to hope we don't see today is uh, holding on to the football. He fumbled twice. Uh, Newton North picked up all their points off turnovers you know, in the, on the ensuing drive. Well, by this time, all the butterflies are out of the system. The kids are kind of settling down here. And uh, again, this has been a very, very nice uh, effort by the offensive line of Needham, who's helped uh, this offense go down the field about 40 yards. Second and seven. Jeff Smith has checked into the game. He's the deep back and back of Greg Gatto. On the line, no call. Oh, Smith. He's got a man no, across he's the middle. Play action. He's got Frank Andrews wide open, tackled at the 15-yard line. Completely fooled me. I didn't expect a pass at all. Ryan Davis hooks up with Frank Andrews for a big 25-yard play and a first down. John Freitas made that play call. He's been pretty conservative all year. And on a first, is that a second down? They go to the air, and Frank Andrews is the guy you're going to go to. He has just been unbelievable when they throw him the football. Well, as we talked about earlier, the tight ends could probably play a really key role in this contest. With the field as it is and the backs not able to get outside the way they normally do, a little bit of ball faking inside, a random walk consistently, great pass, great catch. There's a handoff to Walker up the middle. He's got a hole, finds about five yards. He's inside the 15-yard line. The Rockets approaching this goal line which has had some trouble with on this end of the field in the course of the season. 
Uh, against Braintree, they threw that interception on their first drive of the game. They also had a fumble inside the five-yard line, and I think it was the same game. It was the uh, Rookline game, but Needham will try to punch it in here. Well, as the defense try to hold tough, they've got to get strong now in a second and four situation. Needham will keep trying to pound away with that power eye offense. Walker in there, and off goes to Walker, looking for a hole, and he's wrapped up and brought down by Chris Guild for a loss on the play. Good job by Guile of getting in there. And again, now the Raiders looking to finally go with that five-man line against this very, very impressive offensive line for the Needham Rockets. And uh, that time, Guile getting good penetration. Again, normally a Jesse, a Jamie Walk would make a quick cut there and say goodbye, but not able to do it on this field today. Big third down. It's like about a third down and five yards to go. Davis holds on to it. He's, he's going to run the option. He's got some room. He's got a lot of room, and he's finally brought down. Oh, he's still working the legs. <laughs> Brian Davis. There he's brought down. He's just so I think he's got a first down. So pumped up for this game, and he's shown it so far. He's been accurate in the air the one time he threw it. He's got legs as well running the football today, and uh, he's just ready to play. What an athlete, three-star athlete, uh, captain of each sport. Yeah, the chain gang gets a rest here because it's first and goal there, and a great job there by, again, Davis of following his blockers, picking his spot, getting up there, and then importantly, after getting hit the first time, the sign of a great back is not to go down after you get hit the first time. He kept working the legs and got the ball down here real close to the goal line. So the Rockets have four chances to punch it in from the three-yard line. Wellesley defense, it's all up to this right now. Got Walker and Gatto in the backfield. Cofield on the near side. He's going in motion. He'll cross the line. Davis hands off to Walker, looking for a hole. Bounces off a tackle and is dragged down for a good loss stand on the up play. There by the Wellesley defense. They did a good job of stopping there. Again, Jamie Walker not Jamie able Walker to get the momentum that he might normally get. They sent Cofield in motion, trying to take uh, the Wellesley defense leaning that way, but they didn't bite on it. You see Walker going over here and getting stood up there. It looked like by Guile. Stevens mopping up, and the rest of the defense is able to recover. Guile's making some good tackles so far. I like what I'm seeing from him, senior captain. Give him a half a yard or so. So second down. The Rockets didn't move the ball at all on that play. Still Walker and Gatto in the backfield. Kofi on the near side. Handoff goes to Walker up the middle this time, falling there forward. That is a touchdown for the Rockets. They take the early lead in this one. Well, the fans at that end of the field with 35 seconds to go, we're happy to see that touchdown by the Rockets. And uh, boy, what an impressive drive. Almost an 80 yard drive, Andrew. That running game just could not be stopped in that key passing play. The play action picked up 25 yards there. We see Walker just pounding it up the middle for a touchdown for the Rockets, take the early 6-0 lead. Two big third down conversions on that drive, third and nine and then third and four, and Brian Davis picked both of them up with the uh, running game, with the option. So here's Josh Wachunski in to attempt the extra point. He's had an excellent year this year, only missed two extra points. He's had a couple of field goals, three out of four. Here it is, short line drive kick is good, and the Rockets take the 7-0 lead. You know what I love about Machonski on that? He was only back one step, so as opposed to risk and slipping on the, on the icy turf, one step, little shot, a great kick by Machonski. Another thing about Josh Machonski, this is his first year playing high school football. He just came in, and that's, that's what you get sometimes with kickers. Guys that played soccer before, him and his brother Matt Machonski, who kicks for both freshmen and JV, uh, both soccer players and decided to try the game of football out, and I think uh, Coach Duffy's very happy that he did. Well, you see again, uh, Jamie Walker, as he's done so many times this year, I think that's his 11th touchdown this year, just powering it in, give a lot of credit to the offensive line, but also give a lot of credit to the play calling there. The fact that they even showed pass, loosen up that linebacking core a little bit, who had been keying on the run up to that point. So the all-important first score goes to the Rockets this time. Last year, Wellesley got on the board first, and Never let go of that lead. Well, the Raiders have had an uncarried, you know, they unfortunately against all carry division opponents have been down uh, in every single game against a carry division opponent this year, at least 13 to nothing. They were able to come back against Newton North and Brookline, but uh, certainly were not able to do that against Braintree. So the Rockets get the score that they definitely want to get here. And again, they did that against the win, guys. Andy Dunn in to kick off. He's a kickoff specialist. It's a ground ball. Looks like Guile over there to pick it up. And he goes down to the turf. Tackled by Pat Cunningham on the play around the 35-yard line. 
And they also get the Raiders pinned back. It's not a very good field position for Wellesley. They're going to take it over to about their own 32-yard line or so. Ideal field position for these teams today inside the 40 right now uh, because, they, I mean, teams just, in, in a regular game, in a regular field conditions, going 80 yards in a high school game isn't very easy to string together plays like that of over 10 yards. Uh, but Needham did it. I think Wellesley can do it too with the, uh, with the three uh, backs that they featured. So we'll see if the Raiders can respond quickly. 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Velisca under center. Back to pass, drops back. He's got a receiver wide open. It's Tom Lakin. Well, they give Tommy Lakin a chance to finally get out there at the wide receiver position. That's really the first time we've seen Lake Lakin in a wide set. They normally have Mark Flynn, number three, or 15, Mike Dowdle. Lakin, a real speedster with great hands, has had a great year at cornerback. You see him making a catch here and then trying to make the quick, uh, the quick move outside, but a good tackle by the Rockets. Pete Lodge on the tackle, and yeah, the Wellesley uh, pass play caught Needham off guard there. Nobody within about five feet of uh, Lakin. Yeah, and again, it, uh, you know, that's the end of the first quarter, but again, if the Raiders are going to prevail today. They have got to throw the pigskin. You see the Needham cornerbacks giving the room about 10 yards of. Uh, you know what? I got plenty of layers on my upper body, and I got plenty of layers on my lower body. But I wore one pair of socks, and that was not very smart today. I wore two. Well, it's not helping me. I've got two, and I'm still freezing. So, hey, really want to thank all the guys in the truck and all the cameramen who are here today for doing such a terrific job. You know, they get out here early, they set things up. You know, the gridiron clubs for both teams also do such a great job here. You know, these kind of production guys would not happen with the guys behind the scenes. Many of the people have been here since 8 o'clock in the morning in the 20 degree weather. I'd like to thank everybody on the crew Jose LaPointe, Lawrence Hawley, Bob Coleman, Tim Nagel, Josh Eilberg, Ian Markowitz, all helping out. Tamara Green on the replay. Mark Mandel is on the graphics and the audio. And Eric Gazelle is your director today. All doing a great job so far. One thing I'm sure they're happy about, they're inside that Mormon Tosi van. Yeah, man. They, 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 <laughs> hey, good to see Lou Howe, the, the voice of the Raiders. A lot of people out here today. So after that passing play, the Raiders will start the second quarter of the second and four. Coming with a blitz, hand off up the middle and stuffed that time. In on the tackle, Jared Freed and Cormac Harkins. Jared Freed has been one of the most underrated players on this defense. Just want to talk about him quickly. He's got a block punt. I think it was against Braintree. A few sacks last week. He's just been unbelievable. He came back from what seemed to be career threat ankle surgery came back and he told me the only reason why I came back this year from the ankle surgery was to play in this game. That's why he came back, Jared Freed. Good to see Lou Howe here. He and his wife, Kate, and Kat just had a, a baby Dominic here, the former voice of the Wellesley Raiders. Third down and four. Big third down for the Raiders. Holiska drops back to pass. And he's got another completion. That's a first down. Once again goes to Tom Tommy Lakin. Lakin. And again, you know, Golovka's such a good passer. The Raiders just have not thrown the ball this year. When that kid takes a two-step drop, somebody like a Tommy Lakin, they're going to get some. Uh, they're going to get some yardage. They're going underneath the Needham defense right now. The DC's made the tackle. It was too late. Uh, Lakin just seems to be going out, uh, just running a little bit of a button hook, maybe, or a little bit of a quick slam in. Just go down to the Chevy, turn around, and I'll hit you, man. Five guy curls. Gonna work all day now. Needham brings up the defense a little bit. Gatto putting a little bit of pressure on Lakin on the near side. Willisca hands it off. Falls to the ground, hand off to Spencer out the middle. Not too much on the play. Willisca had a little bit of a fall after that. Once again, how slippery this field is today. Spencer's such a talented tailback, has really had an up and down year. In the first couple of games, he had a, a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns. Had kind of a drought in the middle of the season where he just couldn't seem to get his footing outside. Uh, and if the Raiders are going to prevail today, they need a big game out of number 24. Second and 10, no gain on the play. Looking now under center. Waits a snap, gets it. Drops back to pass, looking on the left side. Another completion. Mark Flynn. Quite a first down, but again, the Raiders really picking up the corners there. Well, this is what Braintree did against Needham to a uh, lesser extent. Braintree went over the top of the Needham defense for touchdown passes of 80 and 45 yards. Pass on these cornerbacks has got to be what Bill Tracy is telling his team right now because that, so far they just haven't had the 
yeah. haven't had the experience. They haven't gotten many balls thrown at them. And this the year. corners are playing a little soft there. It looks like the corners are off about seven yards off the line of scrimmage, and their first step is back. As you know, you don't want to get beat. You know, get beat deep. I think they're a little bit tentative too with the uh, slippery conditions moving backward. So see, maybe setting coach. up the hitch and go too. See if they do here on third and short. They hand it off, and they've got a first down. Obang up the middle, and the drive will continue for the Wellesley Raiders as we go under 10 minutes to go here in the second. Impressive drive so far by the Raiders. Well, for those Raider fans, boy, the best panacea for uh, uh, giving up a touchdown is to come right back and get one of your own, and they're certainly trying to do that to, today. And again, you see them mixing up the plays nicely here as opposed to just uh, run, run, run. They've had a couple of nice passes to the outside, nice blast by Obang, and they got a couple of back-to-back -back first downs. First and ten, ready to stay in there, wing T. Got Lincoln on the near side. Looks good, dropping back to pass. Looking, he's got good coverage this time. He's going deep over the top for Lincoln, and he's intercepted by oh, Steve Seeds. What a play, what athleticism by the young junior. Well, as we talked about, they were really kind of setting up the hitch and go, which is they threw three passes, short passes, two to Lincoln, one to Flynn. And a little pump fake and try to go along. But again, uh, Steve Seeds with just a great play was not faked out at all. What a play, Steven Seeds. And you know, Greg sees our PA announcer are very happy with that one. It's his fifth of the year, fifth interception. It's a team leading. It's a team leading number of interceptions. He had one against Milton in the uh, last seconds of Milton was just kind of throwing it up. He's got great hops there for a uh, cornerback. He'll be back next year, the junior. Now the Raiders have thrown the ball four times in this series. They have not thrown the ball four times in one game, I don't think, all year long. So. Coach Bill Tracy recognizes it against this very impressive Needham defense. He's got to do something different. Needham run defense has been very, very good this year. The pass defense a little bit suspect. We'll expect that Needham stays on the ground, head off out the middle, falling forward past the 20-yard line. Looks like Walker. And Wellesley was very successful just going back to their drive. Uh, throwing short. I mean, they, they can keep on doing that, I guess, until Needham sneaks up. And I guess that's what they were expecting, as you said, with uh, going deep, you know. Uh, well, with the exception of Framingham, the last six games, the Raiders have not been able to score more than 15 points. So in these kind of conditions, one touchdown could be you know, all that is needed in this kind of a contest, particularly with an impressive defense like the Rockets have. So the Raiders have got to create their own turnovers here if they're going to win. Game of two on the play, second and eight. Davis hands it off to Walker. A little counter play, he's breaks outside. the tackle. Now he's got a first down. Finally dragged down. That looked like... Uh, Chris Guiled on the play, but a 15-yard run by Walker on the far side. A little counter play, picks up a big gain for the Rockets. Again, Walker doing a great job when he comes out of inside. He's met with some resistance there, and that time had enough confidence in his footing to pop it outside. Number 33, what a terrific back. Just kept his feet moving, Jamie Walker, who was player of the week against Student North in the uh, in Division Three. One of the players of the week. Division Two, excuse me. <laughs> Another first down for the Rockets. Davis under center, offensive line set. Handoff goes to Gatto this time up the middle. And he is stuffed and brought down by several Wellesley tacklers. Good to see Chris Geek and number 43 able to get in there. Number, number 76, Ronnie Slayman. He's an all-star wrestler. And boy, when he gets in the middle, he really clogs things up nicely. I guess injuries don't really matter for this game. It's the last game, but it's the Needham game or the Wellesley game, so Well, Chris Geek, no who just suffered a really tough injury there, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, actually. I um, mean, he is a tough kid, and he's uh, he's actually going on both sides of all. God bless him. Second and ten. Davis fakes to Gatto, keeps it himself. Oh, he's, he's got, got some room. Option, he's man. nearing the 45-yard line. Took a hit. Well, good was... job by Adam Spencer coming up and making the hit, but not until Davis had, again, a terrific run. They've run that option very, very effectively with Davis not risking turnovers there, but keeping him himself and making the good decisions. And that's just, that's another, that's a fourth option they have on the ground. They really showed it last week, and now I think they're going to use it a little bit more. Brian Davis in his last, could be his last high school football game. All these seniors in their last football game, they want to show everyone something. Not too many of these kids are going to go on to play D1 ball. You know, this is what it's all about here, man. They're down and two. Davis hands it off. Right up the middle, first down. It's Walker. Looks like Jamie Walker up to midfield. Jamie Walker again doing a great job of just following those linemen on the right-hand side. Good blocking by the right-hand side of that line. Good tackle there by the Raiders. Could not see who it was, but it was too late to, to stop the first down. So again, Needham getting the turnover 
and turning it into ball possession with 6.48 left to go. They want to keep that clock moving. We've seen Nino put up drives of eight minutes just controlling the ball. I'm sure they'd love to do that right now. They're at midfield, power right. Ghetto and Walker in the backfield, Davis Smith. Looking down there, he's got a five again. Oh, and my goodness. And it is incomplete, tipped. Great play. Frank no, Andrews was right there down the middle. Gustavo Medina with the tip, but Andrews had six points all over. Good ball fake by Davis, kept his footing. And again, they're looking at that tight end. It's the same play we saw again. So Milton go for 50 yards, little slant for Andrews, and this time it was broken up by Medina on a heads up play to tip it up in the air. It was a, it was a great play by Medina, but that's what we see from Frank Andrews. He's a receiving tight end. Before he's a blocking tight end, he's got excellent speed. And uh, he also plays linebacker on the defensive side. Does an excellent job there. He was out for the first few games of the season. They missed him dearly, and now he's back. Davis he holds on to it. He's going to run. He doesn't have that much room, and he's dragged down. Good job by Eric Gobang. Again, Lake can stay in with the outside guy, not, uh, not, not going for the fake. And it required the defensive end, Obang, to come over and make the play. He got some of his laundry and held on for dear life. So that's going to bring up a third down and long. Needham's really not been faced with a third and long so far. But as we've seen from the first quarter and the first half of the second quarter, Needham is not going to be uh, afraid to go in the air today. Big third down play for the defense for the Raiders, that's for sure, with 5.55 left to go. Same formation for the Rockets. Got Venti Andrews in the tight end. Some movement, no flag. Davis hands it off to walk on the left side. He's got no room at all. Dragged down by the Wolseley defense. Again, Andrew Ellsworth, number 55, getting great penetration there. And then Obank, 32, and Chris Geek, 43, mopping up. So it looks like the Raiders will get the ball back. And now we'll have to see if Chris Pavaceres can improve on that first punt. Probably will now. Also, he's got the wind in his favor. He does indeed. Old Glory is flat out here as the wind's going about 20, 25 miles an hour right to left on your screen. We'll see what Pavaceros can do. He's been known to put balls inside the 20. Well, that's where Guile and Spencer are standing right now. Good well, snap. Back into a return. Pavaceros with a much better punt this time. Caught it around the 22 yard line and an oh, excellent a tackle. The ball comes loose. loose. No, they're going to say it was down. You're gonna say no, it was I think, say it was I think that's a good call. I think he was down. Tommy Lakin, actually, I believe it was, uh, had the play, could make the cut he wanted to make, put the ball on the carpet, and certainly the Raiders are very, very fortunate. Now, in normal field conditions, I think Lakin's probably going to get around Callahan, but on the slippery field, Callahan closed very quickly, dragged down Lakin, almost got the fumble. Mike Callahan is a monster of a, of a special teams player, also on the offensive line. So the Raiders will start at their own 25-yard line. They've got a long way to go to try to get on the board, but that's exactly what Needham did in the first quarter. Haluska under center. Blitz coming. Picks, picked up by the offensive line. Haluska looking deep. A uh, little bit of a duck out there. It is broken up. He looked like he really wanted to go across the middle there. Chris Gow was knocked down, and so Haluska had to get uh, creative there. Trying to get the ball over there to Flynn on the left side, but again, the, the Needham defensive backs are doing a terrific job of staying home. They may give up the stuff underneath, but they are not going to get beat. Yep, they got beat too, too, too many times against Braintree. And another thing, when you watch the Needham defensive line try and uh, push through the off, break through the offensive line, they're having trouble doing that as well. Making a good swim move or a uh, burst of speed to get to the quarterback. Offensive line doing a pretty nice job against the bigger defensive line that Needham's got. Going motion is Spencer. Handoff. No handoff. Play action. He's Complete. got Guile that out there. Guiled. He's got a first down. And he's dragged down by the Rockets. 12-yard play by the Raiders. Play action works to perfection to Chris Guile, the wing back on the left side. Well, in the Delaware offense, that's called a waggle, where you fake it to the fullback up the middle. Haleska rolls out left across his body and throws the ball to Guile. Chris Gile is also a terrific receiver out of the backfield, and uh, Gile picks up the first down. I'll tell you, I'm really impressed with this uh, Frank Haleska right here. Uh, he's doing an excellent job. I think he's four for five right now. Or yeah, and they really, I mean, they just missed him so badly there for seven five. games. Looks like actually four out of six on the oh. game now. Oh, yeah, a little right. different formation, oh. slipping to the ground just, and going uh, you know, down. You, just, you know what, you hate to see weather conditions negate the performance of quality athletes. And, you know, both Smith and Walker and Gatto and Guile and Spencer and Obang not able to really show what they can do to here today under these kind of conditions. Well, we said that was going to be a problem. Once a guy's down in high school football, he is down. Once his knees are down, could result in loss of yardage, and here it did. 
it's unfortunate to see because we know how good these guys, how well these guys play. As you said before, Chris. Well, we saw Roy Johan before, and we said, Roy, have you got a hotline over to the Walpole Weymouth game? So we we'll hope to give you some kind of an update here shortly. I'm sure they're faced with conditions just as bad in those, those places. Uh, see if their games are neutralized. Hulska, another play action. He's looking. Great coverage. Hulska back to pass. It is tipped and incomplete. Looking for Guiled over the middle. Offensive line doing a great job for Wellesley so far. Yeah, they are doing a good job of, of keeping out the need of defense. Mike Wigley, 78, providing some good protection there along with 53, Julian Turner, number 54, Greg Diamond, number 74, uh, uh, Tyler Hansmeyer, number 55, Andrew Ellsworth. Again, we see a lot of good protection there. Holuska trying to trying to be able to find somebody, and that is a luxury that they have not had this year. He has not had good protection when he's been in there. The line doing a great job, as you pointed out. Third down and 14 for the Raiders, faced with a long yardage play here to get a first down. Play action of Luska, he's chased it. Freed. Chased by Freed, gets it off, it is incomplete, tipped up. Just so by difficult to throw under these conditions, particularly on the run. Good penetration by the Rockets there. Again, Haluska trying to make something happen, and I, 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 that's got to be, what, the sixth, seventh pass so far? This, uh, that, that's the most that the Raiders have thrown all year. I'm very surprised with this, uh, with this offense. From what we heard earlier in the week, all Needham could talk about was that Delaware wing offense and how they just use all three of those running backs uh, a number of times in the game. But I, it, right now, they're completing passes. And for Wellesley, it's just a matter of breaking that one big play. Whoa. I think. Aye, snap, here comes the rush. Get Hunt is off very short, bouncing down. It's going to be fielded and marked down by the Wellesley team at the 37-yard line. Check that, the 42-yard line. Well, Short with 3.10 left to go, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Coach Tracy, if they're able to stop stop the first down play, starts to use his timeouts, of which they've got a lot in high school football, don't they? Well, I think they have about five timeouts, maybe even more than that. But yeah, these teams are not afraid to call a timeout to try and get the ball back, uh, especially in a game like this where it's already 7 nothing. You're down. It's all about it's all about getting the ball in field position. Needham's got good field position here. It'll be interesting to see if they pass the ball or if they try to keep on pounding it up the middle. I don't think he's got out of the formation all day. Handoff goes to Gatto up the middle. Falling forward around the 45 yard line, maybe a gain of two. Good blocking there on the right side of that line. Number 51 absolutely took out uh, number 50 for the Raiders. And uh, again, what the Rockets want to do here is really control the ball. And as we see, Coach Tracy not electing to use any timeouts here as the clock continues to tick down at 245. So the Raiders are saying, hey, you know what? We're Take going to locker nothing, room yeah. down seven to nothing, and we'll hope we'll come out and you know get warmed up and come out in the second half. Well, they will have the ball to start the second half, Wellesley. They will indeed. Second down and seven. Davis hands it to Walker. He's got a little bit of room nearing midfield, pushing the pile forward. Finally dragged down around the Wellesley 49. It's going to be a third and short for the Rockets. Jamie Walker, just a moose today, plow plowing through that uh, offense, I uh, used that uh, Wellesley defensive line. He just keeps his feet moving. That's so important as you take a look at the play right here. There you see a timeout called by Needham. They want to get some more points on the board. Well, I'm really impressed with number 51, Alex Garlic. Alex Garlic doing a terrific job of not only blocking on the initial hit, but of driving his man down the field. Uh, and that's what you really need out of an offensive lineman. So I can talk to both juniors on this offensive line, but they will be hurt when they lose Brecker, Callahan. Oh, no, they'll have Harkins as well, excuse me. But the loss of Brecker and Callahan will hurt too. Third down and two. Big crowd on hand on both sides, as always, for this Thanksgiving game. Slipping and going into the pile. Looks like Walker, but I think he's got a first down. Still not dragged down. Finally goes down around the Wellesley 45. That's another first down for the Rockets. Yeah, I just love the way that kid runs. The key to all great runners is to keep the legs moving even after you get hit the first time. That's what Jamie Walker's all about. And Andy, you, you know Jamie Walker. Do you know where he's going to college yet, or does he have a, does he have a plan on that? He, he's still waiting. It's, it's a very tough uh, procedure when you got Walker who's had so many injuries to try to uh, pick out a college and find one that will hopefully give you some kind of scholarship. Um, it might be one of his choices. Yeah, that is definitely one of his choices. That play is stopped by the Wells of defense. 
excellent pressure that time. Andrew Good job Ellsworth. by Greg Diamond, 54, getting in there and making the hit. Maybe a little bit Greg too little, Diamond too late. The now there's a timeout. This time the timeout's by the Nita Rockets. So the Rockets perhaps thinking, you know what? If Raiders aren't going to call timeout, you know, maybe we're going to try to make something happen here. Why not do some misdirection or something, you know, try to catch that defense leaving. If they go into this locker room with a two touchdown lead, it's a big, big difference. And you might try and see them go over the middle again to uh, Andrews. That play was open the last time they tried it, and uh, they might try it again. That's the guy they want to go to. Got an update from our out of town, uh, uh, out of town markers in Walpole, scoring zero to zero. That game of vital importance for this lead up squad. Weymouth goes down and Needham wins. Going to the well, playoffs. You know, and that game could come down to Jay, Jason Anzalone, who's the uh, the running back for Weymouth. He had a huge game against Wellesley. What a quality back. That kid's going to be playing someplace next fall. He also had a great game against Needham. That's a jo Jojo Camillo and uh, Billy Shea from Walpole as well. I think, yeah, Walpole's got, I mean, excuse me, Weymouth just had an unbelievable running back. They put three guys in the backfield almost every single play, and then they're going to run the fake to one guy, they'll give it to the other guy. Yeah, they, they, they don't even they don't even think like they're gonna pass it. They got three guys that are all <laughs> crouched down there, nice and tight. And it's, the question is, who has the ball? Yeah, JoJo Camilo doesn't have to worry about uh, going downfield at all. Movement on the offensive line. I think that's got to be a false start. It's like Brecker might have jumped. Well, it was a quality offsides, at least. I mean, it wasn't just one guy. I think he had two or three of them that jumped the snap count there, though. Maybe a mistake by uh, Davis, or maybe the left side. I don't know what it was, but. Definitely not. And I have absolutely given up on stats today. It is Yeah, I think we can let, we can let that go. Well. <laughs> I don't know about them, but they may be just a hurry to get in the locker room. <laughs> I am. Great crowd here today at uh, in Needles Memorial absolutely Field. Unreal. You get a great crowd every year for this game. It's just unbelievable. People don't seem, a lot of people just don't realize how big this is. The number one rivalry in the country. He's Good got it outside, being chased by Guile. Walker does get out of bounds around the 45-yard line, gain a five on the play with a minute 35 to go. It's going to bring now that's the first time we – sorry, I can see it. That's the first time we've actually seen Davis pitch the ball to Walker. Walker with a nice catch there. Good job by Gal of preventing him from actually getting all the way outside. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, the pitch is a risky play on a day like this. you got to get your feet moving. you got to make sure you're there for the ball. So, uh, yeah, you're going to see the ball, you're going to see him go up the middle most hey, of the time. Hey, Duff, Duff called timeout, man, and he came out with something different, and I like that. These guys didn't come out here to lay up. They came here to hit it long. Third down and ten. Two wide receivers now for the Rockets. You've got an offset eye, only one tight end. Davis drops straight back, looking over the middle, complete oh, to Walker. What a, catch. What a, what great a grab. Play. What a set of hands on number 33, Jamie Walker. Davis put it there. But man, Walker made the grab, and with 129 left to go in this half, Needham is not content to go into the lo locker room 7 zip. Brian Davis with a nice throw as well. Brian Davis looking good today. Both quarterbacks are. And Davis hasn't exactly had the best year. He's been furious at himself several games or just not doing what he should do, but he has come out with a fire today. He's throwing some great passes. Handoff goes to Walker on the right side. Trick down this time by the Wellesley defense, gain a four on the play. Guile on the tackle. Guile with the uh, with the tackle there again, saved another big game by Walker and uh, the senior co captain number 33 Walker really starting to get it in gear here. You know the Raiders will benefit by having number 36 Chris Guile back next year. He's the third brother of a very very talented trio of brothers Nate Guile, Steve Guile and Chris Guile. He's had a great year on both sides of the ball and and uh, again, when you take a look here, you take a look, a lot of kids are playing for the last time here on Thanksgiving Day. But for a lot of kids, it really kind of sets a tone about, you know, coming back for their senior year. I saw that from the offense of Needham last year with Davis and Walker. They may not have the best game, but they definitely made their mark. They're back here today, and they're playing a great game so far. Well, the other thing is that if, you, if Needham is able to get to the playoffs, you know, you had a tough loss against a very, very good Wakefield team uh, last year. And, and a lot of times when teams have been to the playoffs one time and they get that experience, when they come back the second time, they're ready, ready to go. I remember when Wellesley lost to Marshfield in the Super Bowl after being undefeated at BU. Then those junior team came back their senior year, were able to get into the Super Bowl and then whitewash a number three rank in the country, Marsh, uh, Marshfield Rams. So you never know what's going to happen to the playoffs either. I believe that was 1999, their third Super Bowl victory for the Wellesley program. 
Needham, not quite so lucky. No Super Bowl victories last year was their first playoff. First playoff. Well, yeah. they got cheated a little bit because they changed the rules or they normally would have gone to a Super Bowl. Said that the last year <laughs> yeah. they go to the playoff yeah, system. That's how it's going to be again. Although I, I have to say I like the playoff system. It allows an extra team to get in there yep. from the base state because what would have happened, I, I don't know, maybe this is just me. I, I don't know it as well. But would one team get in from the base state? And no, no, it's, it was two teams. One from the Hergit, one okay. from the Carey used to go. Davis hands it off as he slips, goes to Walker on the left side. Trying to get outside. Tackle. Breaks another tackle, breaks a third tackle. Oh, man. Still going near the 20-yard line. Finally Love that down. kid. Kathy and Jamie Walker, you got to very, be very, very proud of number 33. He's giving it all he's got out there. And his sister Caitlin on the sideline, one of the cheerleaders, is obviously Ivy. I remember when, when uh, Jamie went down against Weymouth, she was devastated. We're going no huddle here, guys. Only 40 seconds to go in the first half. Handoff goes once again to Walker, looking for the left side. He's got a big hole, nearing the 15, now nearing the 10, finally dragged down. Jamie Walker, a great play. 33 seconds to go, another time. And now you're definitely in Machunsky's range if they can't get the ball in. With the wind in Machunsky's favor still. We've seen a chance to kick upwards of 30 yards in games, 35 yards in practice. Yeah, this is a good time out here, I think, by actually, uh, by Tracy to try to be able to get his team and his defense settled down here. There's been no surprises here. It's been number 33, 33, 33. He's run it right on a pitch out. He's run it down on the right side. He's taking a pass out of the backfield down the middle. Now he's had two runs to the left side. Defense, guess what? Number 33, you got to watch him. And that's exactly when uh, Neon's going to pull out a pass. You've seen that season twice, which is we've also really we've, a surprise. Uh, and not surprisingly, there's 33 seconds left to go in the half. This is not a good omen for the Raiders. <laughs> we've also seen uh, when number three, the single three there, Jeff Smith, when Jamie Walker is getting keyed on, and maybe that's what uh, Dick. Tra uh, excuse me, what's his first name? Tracy. Bill Tracy. Bill Tracy. Excuse me. But uh, Bill Tracy might be saying, hey, guys, yeah, Walker's beating us right now, but watch out for uh, Smith, uh, Smith and Gatto as well. So the ball's at about 11-yard line here, so they got uh, four downs to do it in 33 seconds. Comes out in their power. I think Cofield actually slot receiver. Hand up goes to Walker on the left no side. No surprise there. Gonna get out of bounds. No, he did not get out of bounds. Walker will continue to roll. Timeout will be called by the Rockets. That, that could be the last timeout. I, I'm not sure I haven't been counting. They either have one or two left. I thought that was their fourth. I think that they've got one more left. There's you Walker trying to get around the corner on the left side, and he was finally dragged down. Although I'm not sure if that motion where they do the referee does that means that that is their last timeout. With 24 seconds to go. I believe that they're saying with the with the uh, with the waving. I think that that is their last timeout. So I look for them to go probably to the, to the air, air here to take advantage mm -hmm. of an incomplete pass would stop the clock. If they do go to the ground and they don't get it, you're probably going to have to spike it and try for the field goal, no matter how much time is left. It'll be interesting to see what Needham does off to do. I mean, the pass full timeout. They still can get a first down if they get the ball inside of the one yard line. <laughs> But if they, they get it that. that close, it's probably going in. Well, I mean, you could see a play-action pass. You might look for Frank Andrews or maybe Gatto or Walker out of the backfield. Well, with the ball on this side of the field and them running the option so well, I really look for Davis to roll out here and then have the option of either kicking it to Walker behind him or cutting it back up inside. The Raiders have got to look for the option here, and they also need to keep their eye on number 85, Frank Andrews. Well, they're coming out with twin Riley Sears on the near side, Cofield and Seas. Watch Andrews that option. The tight end on the right side. Davis hands it off to Walker, trying to bounce off a tackle. He's brought oh. down short of the first half. Now the Rockets 18 got seconds. Up. They are, not, they, they are out of timeout, so again, you may see them spike the ball. 10 seconds, Counting the referee's putting it down quickly. Time. Davis does spike it with seven seconds to go. Bond, James Bond, we got a 007 on the scoreboard here. Now it looks like they're gonna go with a, a field goal attempt here by Machunsky. And throw quickly, you never know, you might be sacked or th uh, an interception thrown, so we'll go with the safe choice of Josh Machensky right, uh, uh, in this situation. And this would be a huge field goal to make this a two-score game. Machensky had a great extra point earlier in this game, so we can kick on this field. Which also had field goals against Newton North. Machensky's big uh, one, uh, time's running down too, Wager. As well as against Walpole, and I believe against... Uh, Dedham? Uh, Dedham, that's right, Dedham. Dedham. Dedham yeah. So here is his three out of four on the air. He missed a 42-yard attempt. 
Chris Pavaseris is your holder. It's a good snap, awesome. good hold, for kick him. is oh, up, good and kick. it is wow. good. That makes it 10 nothing. Needle with two seconds to go in the first half. Josh Pachonski perfect once again. That's just a great job of clock management by Coach Duffy, too, getting the ball. And it looked like since the Raiders were not going to call timeout after they got shut down the first play, that perhaps the clock would just run out. But Coach Duffy said, no, 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 we can score here. Gave the ball to number 33, who did a lot of work, and then Machunski finished it off. And you got, you got Machunski centered right in the middle of the field. Machunski again with that one step, and bam, just kicks it right through the line drive field goal. Josh Machunski. Very impressive kick. So now all the Rockets have to do is make sure that well, he doesn't return a touchdown against them. Probably a little pooch kick. Andy Dunn has had a great year kicking off little pooch kicks. They actually had a real kickoff recovered by the Rockets when it went off the front line of the Brookline, Brookline return team. Boy, that just also psychologically has got to be so hard on the Raiders who think that maybe they're going to go in to the locker room only trailing by one touchdown. And to have uh, the, the Rockets come right down the field and Machunski kick that has got to be hard. So we'll see what Coach Tracy, who's a master at getting his team motivated for second half, will be able to do in the locker room. He said we've seen Wellesley come back against Newton North. They're going to have to do it once again on the frozen tundra of Memorial Field. Dunn kicks it off. It's a ground ball up the middle. Stays in bounds. Picked up. Jimmy Nelson, number 30, has got it. Nelson, he's going to hold on to it instead of pitching it. And he is brought down on the far side. That will end the first half of play. The Rockets have a 10 0 advantage. Really impressive showing on uh, both sides of the Neon team. Well, this is a different team than we saw last year in the Turkey Day. And as you talked about, these seniors have got a lot of pride. Uh, they really want to go to the postseason again and have a chance to be able to improve on, on last year's uh, performance. And again, all they can do is take care of business here today. They can't, uh, they can't control what Walpole and Wade went through, but a uh, very impressive effort by the Rockets in the first half. Offense showing that it's got, uh, it can beat you in two ways so far, running the ball and they've passed the ball, uh, doing an excellent job. And Wellesley's going to go into the locker room trying to figure, figure some things out to come out and play better in the second half. As uh, Andrew and you have said, Chris, uh, they've, they've come back in some games this year against teams, uh, and they're going to have to do it again here today. All right, so we played 24 minutes. And uh, we've got a quick update. I think Weymouth has taken a two-touchdown lead over Walpole. That's, that's not a good omen for the Rockets. But anyway, that's the end of the first half. Needham leads 10-0. Uh, ben Crest will be back for the second half of action in, in about 20 minutes. Welcome back to Memorial Field. We're sorry we couldn't get you the halftime activities. We're having some technical difficulties. Uh, we actually have only one camera operating right now, but our crew is working very hard to get that uh, other cameras working back again. We're starting out the second half right now. It's a ground ball kick by Andy Dunn, picked up by Guy. Rolls by Guy. Here comes the T, and it's down. Rolls, but it's still running. And he was in it. And I don't know. I got to stop and start for the Raiders. Guy, it seemed like it just slipped out of his hands. I thought maybe he had uh, he had picked it up. Yeah, it's just a recovery. huge recovery for him. That really hurts for Wellesley. We're trying to have important special teams uh, to, to any game, and you know, Needham with a 10 to nothing lead, the last thing that the Raiders wanted to do was to give the ball, but hey, it's a slippery pigskin. It went on the ice, it skirted away, and that's just what happens sometimes. Some days are better than others, and the Raiders need to have their defense step up here, or else this thing could get out of hand real quickly. Greg Gatto recovered the ball on the kickoff. The Rockets start on the Wellesley 22 yard line, handoff up the middle to Walker. Good stuff by, by that defense. Wellesley defense, but. Needham still with the ball near the red zone to start the half when Wolseley should have had the ball. And, uh, turnovers are key in a game like today where field position means so much with the field conditions. And now Needham's got the ball back and if they were to score here, things would not be looking very good for Wolseley. Well, this we could mentioned. be both of the team's Super Bowls today. We heard that Weymouth is beating up on Walpole 14 to nothing. So you're getting no, you're getting no help from your friends down Route 27. <laughs> Davis drops back, draw to Walker on the right side. He is all stuffed by that Wolseley defense. That's a big loss on the play of about two. Spencer in on the tackle. Well, actually, Chris Guile is around Guile. the ankles the there. And, you know, you're sure that Guile feels badly about the fact he wasn't able to get the fumble Throws there. But the a terrific job of going out and making the shoestring tackle on Jamie Walker. He's not letting that uh, mistake 20, carry over off the defensive line. side. And that's exactly what you have to do. It's a football player's mentality. If you're going to play both ways or play on special teams, hey, forget about it. Go well, out and do your job. Yeah, and the defense, if the defense can stop Needham here, this would be a terrific boost to the Raiders. They're even in Machunsky territory right now based on the way he's kicking the ball, though. 
Third down and 11. Davis hangs on to it. He runs the action. action. He's going to keep the ball. He's got a hole. He runs down. He's not going to get a first down. But he does close within uh, about a 35 yard field goal attempt from Machunski. If they attack him, he's into the wind. It is. We'll yeah, he, he would be kicking. I think they're in four down territory here and there because, you know, they don't want to risk having a, a, a block field goal or something, and they certainly have a lot of confidence in their offense. You get the ball number 33, and I think uh, you, know, you certainly have a good chance of making four yards, which is what they need. Well, Davis is back out on the field. It's fourth down and about five, six yards to go from the Wellesley 16-yard line. They will. Let's see if they, uh, they're going to put two backs in the backfield. Got Cofield in the near slot, sees near wide. Davis fakes the handoff to Gatto, gives it to Walker up the middle, powering over the defense, got nearing it. the first I think down. He's got it. You know, that, that second effort, effort mm -hmm. that second effort did it. Jamie Walker with the run, stopped by Chris. It Kutuk. is a first down for the Rockets. The drive continues, and the power running of Jamie Walker keeps the drive alive. Give a lot of credit to Brecker and uh, Fox and Callen, those guys up front. They did the blocking that they Over needed to. Line. Well, it looked like the Raiders had done a good job of stopping uh, stopping Needham after the turnover. And uh, I mean, what can you do? It's just a very, very impressive offensive display by that front line. And now it's Jamie Walker's turn to try and power it in. Oh, Davis holds on to it. It's a keeper, big oh. call. Oh, the they're play. Saying oh, fumble. They got it, and they do on the one-yard line. The oh, Raiders man. recover the ball, and the defense pulls up a big play out of their bag for a turnover for the Rockets. Gustavo Medina coming up limping there. I'm not sure who recovered it, who had the, 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 the hit there. It looked like number four. four. That, would, that would be uh, Mike Stone. Oh, I saw 41, but there is no 41 on the roster. No, 41 is Gustavo Medina. He's actually 71 normally, but because Geeka can't play offensive tight end, they've got uh, Gustavo Medina in there, and they're at the three-yard line, guys. You want to talk about backed into your own backyard. Especially with the Needham fans, that hostile crowd back in the end zone. So you got Needham pushing out the coverage even a little bit. They're not going to give up those soft five-yard passing plays. Luska hands it off up the middle. Looks like Obang. Yeah, no surprise that it was going to go to number 32 to try to give him a little bit of breathing room here. But, uh, you know, that's got to be a big boost to the Raiders because it certainly looked like Davis was on his way to the end zone. We'll go back to that play. Brian Davis, he really got up the middle very, very quickly, and he saw nothing but the end zone until I think that ball just got popped out. Whoever made the hit, it's hard to see from up here, especially with that big pile up. But whoever well, did make the play uh, made a good one. And really, it's been a pretty error-free game when you think about it. There's been very few penalties and really the turnovers. You'd expect a lot more turnovers than we've seen here today. Their first real fumble of the game. So Wellesley gave himself a little bit of room and brings up Boy, the not second much. They didn't give him much of a spot there. It looked like Obang had about four or five, and they gave him three. Hand off once again. Trying to pile the way up the middle. Wellesley doesn't get much. They'll blow the play dead around the 10-yard line. And this could actually be uh, something that Wellesley doesn't want to happen. They got the ball back inside their own, inside their own five-yard line. Now, if they end up having to punt, if they can't convert on third down, it's going to be very good field. It would end up being very good field position for the Rockets. Well, this is not a time when you want to try to do any kind of a jet sweep or anything. There's just no footing. So, Eric Obang, I think if you're 11 defensive players on Needham, you ought to just look for number 32. Well, now it's third down and two, and yeah, they probably will use that pullback up the middle. We'll thank our spotter down here who's giving us the numbers. We're about a $7 cab ride away from the field here. <laughs> Wilson stays in their wing tee with the wide receiver on the far side. Haluska under center. Give this to Obang right up the middle. Oh, he's, he's got to work he's the legs. Got... Depends on the spot. I think they might give it to yeah, him depending on. I don't know. I think, you know, we're going to, the chain gang looks like, I think the chain gang's going to finally get some exercise here because uh, the spot looks like it's right around. Well, when, he was, when, he was, when he was pushed back, yeah. give, they should give him the spot where he got farthest. Yeah, so I don't back. know. It looked like a JV spot there. They're going to say it's fourth down. Schwartz and Fox in on the stop, and here comes they're, the chain game. They will measure. measure. It is very close on the 13-yard line. I, I Give credit to the defense there, but uh, I don't think he's got it. I don't think he did either. This is a courtesy measurement here. And also for Wellesley to figure out what exactly they want to do if it's fourth and fourth and about an inch, I mean, who knows, but they're so close right now to their own end zone. And they got, got it, first down for Wellesley. I love being wrong. 
Well, yeah, we, we, do. We, we don't like it down. as much <laughs> in this situation, but yeah, they get the first down. It's a good oh, thing they measure. Well, Eric Obang is just such a tough, talented kid. He's been playing on a bad ankle all year, year long there. The offensive line had a pretty good surge, but all the linebackers came up, and really 32 made that on his own. I remember uh, Obang also a basketball star, and along with Guile. Is Guile in basketball? Yeah, Chris Guile is a terrific basketball player. Eric Obang is one of those guys that are going to get you about seven or eight rebounds a game and beat up some people along the way. I remember Guy Lester is an excellent shooter, if I, if I uh, remember. All right, so the Raiders drives continues. Haluska drops back to pass, looking for a short curl. Oh, can't get him, now he's going to be wrapped up and sacked by the Rockets. Brecker and Schwartz. Brecker. Andrew Brecker and Doug Schwartz in on the sack. Pushes Rosie right back down to their five-yard line. Haluska a little upset there because it looked like he had Flynn on the hitch and go, except Flynn didn't go, so I don't know if there's a misconnect because he kept waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing happened, and then before you know it, the defense was on him. Well, finally, the defensive line with Brucker and Schwartz, two big guys breaking through, and they end up combining to make a big sack. And these Raiders, second long. And, you know, for some reason, these Raiders just do not throw to the tight end. I, I, I've never been able to understand it, but in this kind of a field condition, you know, two-step drop, tight end across the middle, loosen up those linebacker cores. That's what they need. Especially when you got so many, uh, you got a couple tight ends out there. You got a couple of options that you're just uh, leaving alone. In motion is guiled, handoff up the middle to Oven. Breaks off a tackle, but he's got three other Rockets players around him. Just not much you can do. When you know the 32 is going to get the ball, I mean, everybody's keen on him. Giles on the jet sweep in motion. If he doesn't get it, there's no other option. It's something we said uh, that a memorial feels like a Bermuda Triangle for uh, running backs. Running backs have just been shut down when they've come in here. Tim Jones, who is of nas national, uh, you know, uh, Brookline, yeah. He's known nationally. For new, he was, uh, look, Notre Dame was looking at him, Boston College. He was stopped at just 67 yards. Uh, I think it's Bill Shea from uh, Joe Shea from Braintree. Also a very big back, uh, only 35 yards against the Steelers defense. Good hit there by number 54, Pat Cunningham. Third down and 17 for Wellesley on their own Third six and yard line. See what Haluska can try to do here. He drops straight back. Now he rolls to the far side, chased by Needham. He throws it out. It is incomplete. Oh. Nice throw though, uh, good power Lucas on that throw. It was, yeah, it was a good good throw. Again, you just got to believe how hard that ball's got to be a, a, to catch on a day like today. I mean, uh, Haluska definitely had a little bit of zip on it. That was a close line throw. When he's even picked up a little bit more here in this second half. Blowing into our face as it always would be here up on the hill. Oh, we love it, don't we? <laughs> well, Needham's going to get the ball in terrific field position here. So Wellesley's got to uh, have a good snap this time. Haggerty's back deep for the Rockets. It is a good snap. It's a line drive punt. Haggerty fields it. He's got some room. Gets outside the tackles. Now he got some room on the far side. Breaks another tackle and brought down big around the 30-yard line. Good job by Mike, Mike Dowdle, Dowdle, number 15, of coming up on the play. But look at the field position that the Rockets are going to enjoy here. I mean, this has been in Wellesley's kitchen the entire second half here with 4.50 left to go. Needham's knocking on the door again. And this is what we were saying when Wellesley did get the ball back. Sure, that was a huge break for Wellesley, but they might have been better off. I mean, right now, Needham's got great field position. Once again, Wellesley's offense has had trouble getting going all day. Well, they're trying to do some different things. I give Coach Tracy a lot of credit. You know, he needed to do some different things. The kids have just not been able to get the, the catch that they need. Rockets come out on the Wellesley 23. Handoff goes to Walker, looking for a hole on the left side. Bounces off now, tries to go back inside. Has a hole. Oh, 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 oh. Jamie Walker's going to have a touchdown. Oh, 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 oh. Walker. Jamie Walker looked like he got stopped at the line. He, he kind of just stopped running for a minute there to, to look at his blocks. Yeah. Found a huge hole on the right side. That's a huge touchdown for Needham. Jamie Walker in the All Stars. That's what you got to say right there. There was good block in there, but that was really all number 33. And, uh, you know, with 16 to nothing lead, you got to give the Rockets a lot of credit. They pinned Wellesley deep in their own territory. They got him to kick it. And then first play of the game, of, of the series, boom, number 33 into the end zone from 24 yards out. And something else, we did find out what college is he, he is looking at. We have Tufts, I think, what else we say? Uh, Amherst. Amherst, Bates, Brown. All Holy very cross. good academic institutions. Too. High snap held by well Havaseris. The kick is good. 17 nothing Rockets. They've opened up the gap. Ben, like you said earlier, Wellesley may have been off if Davis just ran it in that time and Wellesley got 
clean field position, a lot better field position than starting on their own too because five minutes later now the score is the same had he scored the touchdown. But and you, and you take five minutes off the clock, which is unfortunate for Needham. But I guess, the, I mean, the fumble was, you know, big for Wellesley considering who knew Needham was going to come down and score. But when you look back in retrospect, exactly. Needham ends up going up 17 nothing, and Wellesley's going to have to pull something out of their hat. They're going to have to score right now and take the sails out of Needham. Well, again, we've talked about the fact that these, these Needham seniors have not enjoyed a, a, a delicious turkey. It certainly has not gone down easily for each of the last four Thanksgivings, and they're looking to try to be able to, uh, to get to the postseason. They need some help, but they don't need any help today. Right now they're doing this all on their own. Coach Duffy with a very good game plan and a lot of good execution by the offensive line of the, of, of, of the Needham Rockets. Yeah, but also, you got to give credit to the defense. The Rockets, when Wellesley comes out with goose egg, you know you know the defense is playing well as well. The Needham defense has been huge all year, giving up about 15 points a game. In the beginning of the year, they gave up big big amounts to uh, Norwood, even though they won that game, then to well, Natick and, and Raymond. You know, and Needham was down 21 to nothing versus Natick and came roaring back before losing. So. Teams can come back in high school. Anything We've seen is, it. Anything's possible. That one is fielded by Guile. He barrels up to around the Chris 49. Guile, Richard, Guile, Guile, Guile. He's got a lot of room. And he's, oh, he just got tripped up. Tackled that around midfield. I'm not sure if that was Andy Dunn. Well, well, we actually saw the exact same thing with Chris Guile that we did with Jamie Walker. He went into the pile and was able to keep his feet moving and it was able to give back. And a good hit there by number 22 to save the touchdown. And that's your kicker right there, Andrew Dunn. Acting a little bit like Adam Vinatieri who can make those tackles. Adam Vinatieri, Patriots today at 2 o'clock, baby, against the Detroit Lions. They need to get it going, don't they? Oh, yes, they do. Should be a fun game. They're all Thanksgiving football. Oh, it's 12.30? Well, it's 2 o'clock in uh, Nova Scotia or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> you know, men never admit when they're wrong. Well, he needs to start it up right now. Luska drops back to oh, the He's going to be sacked. Oh. 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 He's on the ball. Brecker got to pick it up. And Wellesley, I think, dived on it. It's still, still moving. Loose. It's still moving. Oh, my There's goodness. a whistle from the referee. And, oh, man. 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 and that's who made that hit. 66 is I believe that Cormac Harkins. Cormac Harkins, he wrapped up. And Doug Luska. Schwartz. Doug Schwartz having a big game. Got Doug the recovery. Brecker in there. Uh, this is just going all need him. Second half has been all need him. Well, Needham's just teeing off on Wellesley, the quarterback. And, you know, we've seen Holuska's not had any time to throw the rock at all. And that time he was looking left. He took a little bit too long. Needham Rockets had the blitz on. They called it right. Big turnover by the Rockets. And Nick Elcock now into the game, the JV running back. Now into the game to play a little bit of fullback, it looks like. So Needham has it once again now up 17 nothing 417 to go in the third quarter. Davis hands off to Walker looking for a hole on the right side. Breaks another tackle. He nears the sideline and finally pushed out of bounds by Adam Spencer. Yeah, Adam Spencer brings it up there again. Number 33 never going down with the first hit there, but Spencer doing a good job of stringing it out. You know, this now comes down to pride. The Raiders looking at a 17 to nothing deficit and not able to generate much offense. Now it really comes down to the kids saying, okay, we need to win the remainder of the game and come out here with our pride intact. We've seen that in a couple of the uh, games where Wellesley got out to huge leads. and Dan Jurgens the touchdown. He did well to at least get a score on the board, uh, at least make it somewhat respectable. 4.07 on the clock. Buck stopped on the out of bounds. Davis hands it off to Walker Good again. Stick there by Andrew Ellsworth. Wellesley desperately needs, desperately needs a turnover right now. They need to get the ball back and they need to get it back quick because Needham's going to continue to just eat up clock there. on the ground. I believe Jamie Walker is uh, over 100 yards with that last uh, big run. Not completely sure. We don't have stats here today, but I think he's gotten the ball so many times that he has to be over 100 right now. Oh, yeah, especially with that big run. Of over 30 yards, I think it was maybe over 40 yards. Jeff Smith in the game now in this third and seven. He's been one of the uh, shovel pass recipients this year. We'll see what Needham comes out with. Davis keeps it. He's rolling now. He pitches it to Smith. He's got some room on the sideline. Oh, man, hit. Close to the first down marker. Good hit there by number four, Mike Stone, along with Andrew. I mean, Adam Spencer. But. Uh, not until he gets up close to first down yardage. Good hard running by Smith. And they say it is a first down for Needham as the clock continues to tick. When we came in, we thought that the running attack from Needham was really going to be the key to this game and that 
Well, Football to stop them. They would have had to go through the air, and that wasn't their strength this year. If you had if you had Brian Davis and Adam Spencer in the same backfield, you'd have the Spencer Davis group, wouldn't you? <laughs> Give me some love. It is cold out here. I've already milked that one this year. <laughs> Good to see the globe here. We got the, the globe field. here. We got USA Today here, man. But you don't. All the paper you need is a globe, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so with 3:21 left to go on a cold, nasty day, the Needham Rockets certainly are giving every indication that they're going to do what they need to do to get to the postseason. Again, they just need some help. Just a quick plug-in, uh, like Riley wanted to say, for the, uh, all the best sports news in Needham. Real Sports Report, it was on last night. It'll be on again next week. Might see some reactions from the players from Needham, and that'll be on Wednesday night, live every Wednesday. That's at 8 o'clock. I'm sure we'll be watching Smith on the left side. Again, I think Brought what you're going to see now is a lot of run into the football. We talked about the fact that Coach Duffy really had a, a terrific job of play calling in the first half, at the end of the first half, to go down and put the uh, the Rockets into, into position. See Tyler Hansmeyer there with a good hit on Smith. And you see him probably use a lot of the clock here now. You know, I don't see a lot of passes coming up anytime soon. No. Boy, Davis has really run this offense just to, to a T, hasn't he? <laughs> He really has. He doesn't need to pass the ball to be an effective quarterback. He can run it, and he calls. He's just such a great play caller. He has the experience of two years under his belt. Second and nine, handoff goes to Walker, wrapped up by that Wolsey defense. Excellent nice job pressure. by Stevens, number 50, the sophomore. Showing a good job. He's had some nice tackles here today for a 150-pound middle linebacker. Hey, the kid's playing all right. He is doing a very nice job, and uh, 76 as well. from Ron Slayman. Ron Slayman, yes. Yeah. He had an excellent pressure on the left side, got right through the offensive line, brought him down for a three-yard loss. 2.15 left to go here, call a third and ten. Need him in that power ride. They've only been out of it for about two, three plays this whole game. Davis fakes the, the handoff, rolls out. Run. It is oh, almost oh, intercepted, that. broken up. That Stone. play by Mike Stone, the Brian safety. I don't see why you need to Mike throw the Stone. football, even though it was third down and 10. Yeah, uh, if you're a Raider fan, you're happy to see him put it in the air because the incomplete pass gives them a free timeout with 157 to go. And now Wells will get the ball back. This game by no means over at 17 nothing was still a quarter and two minutes left to play. If Wellesley can get some quick points on the board, uh, we'll yeah, We saw game. the Notre Dame Fighting Irish score 28 points in the third period last week. We can see anything here in a tundra. I feel quick like turnover. Yellow Knife Canada right now. Quick turnover and a touchdown could spark this Wellesley team. On fourth and 10, Davis rolls out. He's still going to pass. Now he's going to keep it. Forced out of bounds, I believe, short of the first down. Wellesley will take over around their own 25. Oh, and a foul on the play. Davis is forced and that could be a personal foul on Wellesley. We'll see what this call is. Mike Stone with a terrific job on knocking him out of bounds. Now the Raiders would have gotten the ball back. And again, we've seen a real good. Oh, geez. It is a personal Boy, that's foul. A tough one. I believe they it's on top. Personal foul on Wellesley, and that is going to give the Rockets a first down. You need, to be, you need to be disciplined on the sideline, I guess. If you're Wellesley right now, you're down. I know Needham's probably jarring at him a little bit there on the sideline, but. I, uh, it was, I don't think it was a face mask. I think it was a late hit. No, he called personal foul. Yeah. So what you're doing is Coach Tracy really demanding to know what that call was. Ask the Zebras to come on over, get some exercise. Don't tell me about this. But, the call uh, was it's on. unfortunate because it's been a very, very clean game and it's been, you know, no difficulties. Really Again, somebody may have just said something as opposed to somebody yeah. hitting somebody. I believe it was on Tyler Hansmeyer. He came away from the sideline furious, yelling at the referees at the call. Yeah, Neil uh, might have had, they might have had some interaction, you know. Uh. So the Rockets once again inside the red zone of Wellesley on the 12-yard line. Walker and Gatto deep. Davis awaits the snap. He gets it. Fakes to Gatto. Hands off to Walker on the left side. Chase by the Wellesley defense. He's going to be dragged down for a big loss. Chris Kinka doing a good job of stringing it out there. Keegan on the big stop. The forward progress. They're going to mark it. Looks like around the 15, loss of about five on the play. Pushes the ball back to the 15-yard line. I don't know, when you got a 17 to nothing game and you got a team that stopped another team on a fourth down play, to me it's got to be one blatant nasty play to be able to throw the flag. I think the refs should have kept the laundry in their pocket there, but they didn't, and Needham's knocking on the door again. You saw Geeka with good pressure on the right side. Coming in. Sure I'll tell you how I really feel. <laughs> 
Second and 13, Davis fakes it. He's gonna throw, it's a straight pass and he overthrows Andrews. He was open, he had a little room to run. Spencer came late on pressure, but pass probably should have been complete. Andrews was open on that play, just overthrown a little bit by, uh, by uh, Brian Davis. Coach Duffy, you're not content to sit on a 17 to nothing lead, trying to get uh, get more points on the board here with uh, one, 59 seconds left to go. It was a nice play, it was well set up. Well, you know, Coach Duffy's never had a victory on Thanksgiving Day for these Rockets, so I'm sure he'd like to make it as sweet as possible, pile on as many points as he can. He played in this game in, uh, I think it was 1978. I thought so, it was 82. 82, okay. There's a pass into the end zone, overthrown, looking for Andrews again. Man, I love the way Davis throws the ball. You know, he's not been really off the mark on any of his throws. That may have been a tad high, high there. Pass Throughout the season, he always says he saves his best pass for the mo most important plays. And now, in probably the most important game of the year, he's pulled out his best game. We also mentioned uh, Dave Duffy played in this game. Bill Tracy also played for, oh, the, uh, for the Raiders, and they had some good teams, although I know that in his senior year, uh, Needham did beat Wellesley, so Coach Tracy, uh, kind of a bittersweet uh, day for him here today as well. They're going to go for on fourth down and 13. Not going to try a field goal, maybe try for the end zone. They need to get down to the two. Only one running back, it's Gatto. Davis drops straight back, he's got some time, looking in the end zone, overthrown. Looking for like C's or might have intended for Cofield, and he overthrew him. Nevertheless, Wellesley will get the ball back. And just an interesting fact I was reading in uh, the Globus, we had an excellent piece on how the first game that they ever played was here, I think it was, no, it was in Wellesley. They had to get people out of the stands to play in that game. They, they played with a rounder football. I think the score was 4 nothing Wellesley. Yeah, it was an interesting thing. You know, Dr. Olam kind of put it. You remember, Wellesley seceded from Needham back then, and they were looking to try to be able to create something. The Harvard Yale had been going. It was 1882 and they wanted to be able to uh, kind of get something going. So they kind of challenge the two teams challenge each other. And there were teams when there weren't even enough kids in each of the schools to field a football team. The principals were the uh, referees in that game. Yeah, it was an excellent piece that they wrote there in the uh, in the, well, it's the oldest rivalry, but I guess it's clarified in the Globe today, Boston English and Boston Latin have the oldest continuous rivalry because they have had uh, enough kids to field teams. Again, the Wellesley kids and Needham kids, not enough of them in the war years. Luska runs out, has a complete pass. And that's the nice. first down and out of bounds. Good play there by the Raiders. It looked like that was Walker. Adam Spencer on the side there. Good pass by Oluska. Greg Gatto with the pressure, yep. forcing him out of bounds. Gatto's done a nice job on defense this year, uh, as well as on offense. He's a guy that's always fired up, always ready to play. Adam Spencer puts out of bounds on the play by Jamie Walker and Greg Gatto. Nice to see him throwing the ball to Spencer. They need to get a few more touches for Adam Spencer. If the kid can get outside, he can fly. He's a track star. 25 seconds to go here in the third. Rockets lead 17 to nothing. Raiders desperately trying to put some points on the board. Holds oh, defense. He's going to the back side. Stays up somehow. Now he's brought down for a sack. And Schwartz with the sack again. Man, Sh I mean, Schwartz is just coming in there untouched. I mean, they're calling the blitz at just the right times. Give credit to your defensive coordinator because he's got all the right calls on defense. Doug Schwartz has been absolutely everywhere today. And that's the end of the third quarter. Rockets have dominated this third quarter and they lead 17 to nothing after 36 minutes of play. We mentioned some of the other teams. It's kind of interesting. You know, Eastern Massachusetts football just does not get the respect that it deserves. St. John's Prep is the number 10 rated team in USA Today. They go up against the variant today. But then you got teams like Everett that's still undefeated and Acton, Foxborough. I mean, they have got a wagon there. Barry Jensen having a terrific year. But yet, again, Eastern Massachusetts football just never seems to get the respect it deserves. But there's a lot of great athletes out east here. A lot of great teams as well. You're right. I think Swanska's having a very good year, yeah. and with their their quarterbacks thrown, I think over 20 touchdown passes this year. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I don't know the yeah. name of the quarterback. Yeah, Eastern Massachusetts football is great, and Bay State football as well. You yeah. see some amazing exactly. running backs out of this Bay State. Two years ago, Norwood was the number one ranked team in Eastern Massachusetts out of the Bay State. They were right up top there last year, and then they lost to Whitman Hanson on the last play of a of the game, or else they would have been number one again. So again, the Bay State Conference very well represented. There was so much balance this year, though, that you had no one dominant team. That's why you see five teams in the Bay State Conference with seven and three records. Exactly, and even Braintree's got a six and four record. Yeah. I believe um, 
The, right. the only teams that really had disappointing years are Framingham and Dedham. The Framingham still got the uh, win over, over Needham, and if they look exactly. at it, if Needham does get a share of the Bay State title, they can say, hey, we beat the uh, Bay State champions. Now, let me ask you a question. If all three teams lose, Needham, Weymouth, and Newton North, who goes? Weymouth will go, I think it is. Weymouth would still go, because they won the tiebreaker. Yeah, I believe it depends on the winner of the... They had the better uh, record versus the Harrogate Division team. Exactly. It depends on the winner. Whoever wins the uh, Her the Harrogate, and if it's Natick, then uh, Weymouth goes. If it's Norwood, I don't know. If it's Norwood, I think it's Needham. But, uh, well, I think I'm there's a sure. scissor play. Chris Kyle, what a great job. Oh, he almost breaks it. What a great job. Now, they ran the scissor play, which we have not seen. Certainly, Coach Duffy's seen that a lot over the years. Guile doing a terrific job of keeping Chris his footing, Guile, even if he was pulled down. A great individual effort. So even though that play was uh, made to confuse the team defense, picked up eventually. Only a three-yard gain on the play, not exactly what you wish to expect from that play in a second and 15. To go back just quickly to the uh, playoff scenario, I think if all three teams lose and, and Norwood wins, I think it also depends, though, on the head-to-head. -head. And Weymouth did beat Needham. That's, that's true. Well, it doesn't look like that's going to happen here today. So the fact is that if Weymouth and Needham both win, Weymouth would go, I guess, by yep. virtue of the tiebreaker. That's oh, a nice good play. play. Nice play by Wesley getting up to the 45-yard line. Excellent Lusco's throw. A beautiful pass. Chris Guile, again, just you know, doing it on both sides, running the ball. He's a good receiver. Good guy the Raiders not quitting here. Get him in stride. Beautiful throw and a nice catch and run after the play. You're right, with 11 minutes left to go, if Wellesley is to put some points on the board, who knows? Surprised they're not in the end no huddle. They're taking their time here. They've got to get points on the board in a hurry and several times here in this fourth quarter. Luska still making some changes here. Looks like he may be trying to call it on audible or something. They'll set it up back into the wing tee. I think they're out of that for a second. Haluska sends Spencer in motion. Handoff, no handoff, play action. Haluska looking, and looking, he's got looking. Opening. He's got opening. It's incomplete. It's thrown dog. behind him. A little bit behind him there, but uh, he had actually Tommy Lake, or rather Chris Lindsay, number 27, clearing out the zone. Guile also was down the field there, and then he was trying to hit Obang underneath there, just threw it a little bit behind him. And it looks like the field conditions actually, since there have been so many feet on this ice, maybe improving just a little bit. The ice doesn't seem to be as uh, thickly covering the field as it was in the beginning of this game. We haven't seen too many slips that, that have affected plays when we saw Wellesley, I don't remember who it was, go down for a loss of about three, and uh, Haleska slipped a little bit. But we've certainly seen a lot of tentative running to avoid mm. that, though. Second and ten, Haluska sends a man in motion. Handoff goes to that. Looks like Guile, Guile the jet gets around street. the corner. And forced Good out of bounds here Good downfield blocking by 24 Adam Spencer. But uh, again, when it takes that long to develop, it's kind of difficult to turn it up the field. Good job. It looked like Jared Free was going to be able to wrap him up in the backfield, but uh, did a nice job of breaking that tackle. Hey, you know what? i got to give the Raiders a lot of credit here. The good pass to Guile up the middle, 17 to nothing. A lot of kids with older tents and go home. Line. That's not what this program's all about. That's not the program that Andy Levin built the last 19 years and that Bill Tracy has taken over and continued. That's really yeah. not, not what uh, this game is all about. You, you try hard for the full 48 minutes. In that freshman game, uh, they were down 14 nothing and came back. 13 yeah. nothing, excuse me. Alaska looking, looking on a sled in. That pass was nowhere near anybody. That one got away from him a little bit. Again, looking at Guile in the slot, it looks like he's certainly got number 36 on his mind. Brings up a fourth down for the Raiders. And now a key fourth down for Wellesley if they want to keep this drive alive and stay in this football game. Well, it looks like they're going to come out and show a punt. I'm not sure wow, the ball in midfield and down yet. 17 to nothing. I'm not sure why you give the ball up here. But uh, it's fourth and about six or so. I, I You know, why? Hey, you got nothing to lose unless, uh, unless they got a fake in their book. I think Needham's got to look fake the whole time because even if they don't get any return on it, Whoa. it's a high, terrible snap, and Needham's coming after it. He's going to be sacked. I don't understand the call. I don't understand why they're, they're putting the ball anyway. 9.37 left to go, down 17 to nothing, and only five yards to go. Goodness gracious. But see him once again. The High, long snap gave punter no chance for a punt or a fake. And if you're not to make it, you give Needham the ball back uh, midfield. worse field position than they got now because that punt just went astray. But it is what it is, and sometimes, uh, again, you never know. Maybe they had the fake set up there, but with 9.37 left to go, the defense that has been on the field a long, long time here on this cold day is going to have to step it up again. 
And that running attack from Needham, where for Wellesley gets going, the other defense got to watch out today. It's been the Rockets. Six man front for the Raiders. Davis holds on to it, tries to go up the middle and has no room at all. Wrapped up, Stevens in on the stop, as well as Medina. Now I think you'll Ryan see Davis just nothing but running ball. plays, and that's what Stop the Raiders are thinking too. Tyler that's why they're Hansmeyer. going with a with a six-man front. Tyler Hansmeyer, and number 74, Turner. and Julian turned to 53 with a stop. Needham wants to at least take the clock. If they don't score on this drive, they want to take it to about five minutes. I'd say if they just keep on running clock and uh, and letting the play clock go down as far as possible, need a little bit more than five minutes. Once again, Power Rod Davis fakes it to Gatto. He's got a pitch out. He does pitch it out to Walker, but there's no room on there. Good defense by Wellesley on that option play. Gain of two Trying for Walker. Trying to keep the ball in bounds there. Good job of catching on by, by, uh, by Walker, 33. Good job by 54, Walker, Greg Diamond, of coming over and mopping up on that play. On play by Chris Guile. Clock does continue to run, though. Walker did stay in bounds. Third and nine from the Wellesley 33. Well, if they put the ball here uh, in the air today, right now on this play, that will be a shaka. I'm shocked that they pass as many times as they have. Yep. Yeah, in the third well, yeah, it's been a great offensive game plan by Coach Dave Duffy. Davis does give it to Walker. And he is wrapped up and stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. We're not even going to get under uh, seven minutes here. I, my estimate was a little bit too low. Air uh, coping with a nice stop there. Uh, and the offense, as we were saying, not only Dave Duffy, but John Freitas, who has been an, uh, an offensive coordinator with this football program. I think yesterday they said 18 or 19 years, I give or take. True, yeah. I think it's yep. 18 or 19. And uh, he does a great job. He's also the varsity baseball coach. Good guy, John Freitas. Neiman's going to run down this clock as far as they can go and then go for it on fourth down and eight. Might as well pass here. Clock will stop even if they don't get it on the run. So we'll see what they pull out of their hat. Whistle's uh, whistle blow flag goes on the field. It is delay. And now they'll probably punt the ball. Davis goes over to the near sideline, consult with the coaches. I think they're going to go for it once again now, fourth and 13. Ball back to the Davis drops back out line. on the field. Set up to play in the huddle. 7-17 Seven, to go in the game. Rockets lead 17-0. Coach Duffy again just going ahead and going for it on fourth down. Davis has split backs so for the first time this game. The pitch goes to Smith. He'll try to get around the corner. He's going to have no Geeka. chance. Chris Geeka gets him outside. Nice job by number 43 again with a bad D and all. Chris Stringing Geeka the play out and making it go. Down. So Wesley will take over Wesley around their own 40 yard line. With 7.04 to go, they're the running out of time. Well, they haven't called Jeff Smith's number too much today. That's uh, one of the few times. I mean, he's a junior. I think what they want to do is get the seniors as many carries. I mean, also Walker's just a great back. Exactly. It's not, it's not like uh, Jeff Smith's your uh, number one here, although he, he's pretty close to it. You'll see a lot more of him next year, Jeff Smith. He's going to be uh, one unbelievable back. Walker's really poured it on the last couple games, especially against Newton North and today. He was on real against Newton North. Comes to Wellesley offense back on the field. Wing T offense, Haluska, he's got Obeng and Spencer and Guiled out there. Spencer goes in motion, handoff does go to Spencer. They'll try a reverse and oh, now it's a reverse oh, pass. Haluska's going deep, he has a receiver, it is cut. Oh, what a play. Well, I love it. You know what, they had a scissor play, they flipped it back to Haluska. He either had Mark Flynn down the far sideline across the middle or Adam Spencer back across the green. Number 24, Adam Spencer doing a good job Thank of hauling Lucas the ball in. You saw Adam everything Spencer. there. We certainly have not seen that play yet uh, this year for the Wales the offense. Again, give Coach Tracy a lot of credit. He's not letting these kids quit, and neither are they quitting. Yeah, those tricky Raiders do a nice job there, and uh, caught Needham defense off guard. That's a flea figure. I guess you'd call them the Raiders of the lost art. <laughs> well, now in the Needham 33-yard line, they'll stay in the offense. They move to the Obang. side. Obang up the middle. Very little on that play, maybe two. 
Man, good surge there by Obang, but what a nice job by the linebackers of driving him back. Dan Fox. Boy, Cormac, Cormac Harkins is a nice player. That's a kid. He's a hard-nosed kid, and uh, he's been in a lot of plays today. He's, he's really got, had a great uh, season this year. He started off the season with a touchdown on an interception against Norwood, yeah. and he hasn't stopped since then. Yeah, he's just got a whole lot of heart, too. He's one of the, he tries harder than anyone I know. And uh, if there's ever a guy that you want to model out there, Cormac Harkins gives it his all 100% on the field every day. Second down and seven. Luska drops straight back, looking left. Quick slant, caught, complete. Around the 15, big hit by Needham. Jamie Walker laid the hit. Nice job complete. by Dowdle of holding that pass, and you had the slant play. Again, the Raiders Rose have not thrown the slant all year Dowdle long. They've thrown maybe one or two times. And Mike Dowdle with a terrific reception, but what a nice tackle by number oh, three. He, he just Jamie Walker. He stood him straight up, Jamie Walker. That's the way you tackle. He's one of the strongest kids uh, on this team. Junior Mike Dallow with a good uh, good catch. Uh, Frank Kaluska with a good pass. Raiders knocking on the door here with 5.30 left to go. Really the first time they've been down here. Kaluska fakes once again. He's got pressure on the weak side. It is complete this time. And forced out of bounds. He Ran out of bounds there again. Uh, great pressure by the Needle Rocket defense there. Haluska doing a good job of getting it away. I don't think there's any gain on the play though. This is the most we've seen a team pass on uh, Needle Rockets all year, and they're doing a pretty good job. Though they haven't put the points up on the board, they've been unfortunate with turnovers. I would dare say that if you went back and checked the stats, they could have thrown the ball. The Raiders could have thrown the ball more in this game than they have the entire season combined. And I think uh, this is. I think you can combine all the times teams have passed on Needham, and this might be more than that. Was no gain on the play. Spencer couldn't stop himself on the sideline there. He just had to go out of bounds. Suska rules left, trips, falls, and is sacked. Sack's going to go to who's that? Number 60, Dan Fox. Well, they're teeing off. The linebackers are just not even staying home here. And we said that line earlier in the game, how nice a job the offensive line for Wellesley was doing. We said maybe they'd get a little bit tired. Not only tired, I think they're just overpowered right now uh, by a bigger Needham defense. Well, the other thing is that when you don't pass as much, the linemen aren't used to blocking in a certain yeah. fashion the way that they have to block it here. And so they're, you know, they're being asked to do some things that they haven't really done before. Third down and long now for the Raiders. Third and 15. Check that third and 16. Spencer goes in motion. Haluska fakes it to him, rolls out to his right. He's looking down the field, slips out of a tackle, and is sacked once again. For Mac Harkins again this time. Sacks Haluska for loss of one. And this promising drive that the Raiders had going has just stopped, been stopped cold. Well, they've uh, they've gone they've gone exclusively to the pass here, which is again is very very atypical of this offense. Uh, you know, something like this with a short, with a slippery field, you got to have a man underneath. And last couple of plays, they've not really had that. So it's a big uh, fourth down play for the Wells. They'd love to be able to score here. It certainly would make the turkey taste a little bit better this afternoon. Under four minutes to go. This could be the last chance for the Raiders to punch it into the end zone. Fourth down and 15 yards to go. Got Flynn on the far side. Same three, Spencer goes in motion. They figure to him. Aluska is looking towards the left oh, side. Spencer's got, wide open oh, and complete. Just overthrew him a little bit. It was a nice, nice uh, idea though, the yep. touch pass. They ran that for a big first down against Framingham earlier this year to Spencer. That time, Mahaluska just Frank leading him a little bit too much. And uh, the outstretched arms of Spencer Seven not able to bring Spencer. it in. And with 3.37 left to go, the Rockets are going to take over. And uh, um, wow, what an impressive display that, that they've had here today. The defense line. has been able to provide the answers at the right time. Another another dominating defensive game. Uh, Newton North last week giving up just nine points. Uh, Walpole, they have only seven. They've just stopped a lot of offenses late in the season, and uh, everyone looks at their five game now. Could be six, should be a six game winning streak. And uh, you look and you say, you know, what's what's been going right for them? I mean, it's been everything, but the defense has just been absolutely huge in those six games. Well, they say that there's three kinds of teams as well: teams that make things happen, teams that watch things happen, and teams that wonder what happened. And Coach Duffy has really had his team make things happen here today. Jamie Walker wrapped up on that carry. We've got a few subs on the field now for the Rockets. Got some seniors out there. I saw Greg Shag check in, Brendan Venti as well. Let me just, uh, while we got a little time out on the field, let me just to pay tribute again to these Wellesley Raiders seniors that have played so well for, for four years and really dedicated themselves to this program. 
Number 21, Tommy Lakin. Number 24, Adam Spencer. Number 11, co-captain Frank Aluska. Adam Spencer, also a co-captain. Number 32, Eric O'Bang. Number 26, Trip Murphy. Number 27, Chris Lindsey. Number 76, Ronnie Slayman. Number 78, Mike Quigley. Number 54, co-captain Greg Diamond. Number 28 or 43 out here, Chris Geeka. Number 55, Andrew Ellsworth. Number 84, Wes Woodacre. Number 74, Tyler Hansmeyer. And the trainer, Josh Ganey. Guys, thanks so much for four great years here. You've done this town proud. Run down the Needham seniors in a second. A little motion there by this Needham probably, offense. And probably will be their last game from what we heard. In unless, Walt, unless Walpole can mount a uh, pretty big comeback. This could be the last game for these seniors. We'll run down very quickly. We've got Matt Dale, Brian Davis, of course, the captain, Chris Pavaseris. Josh Wachunski had an excellent year. Duke Cofield, Andy Dunn, Matt Murphy, Jamie Walker, Mike Leonard, Ross Scanlon, Brendan Venti, Doug Schwartz, who's had a great game today, Greg Shag, Pat Cunningham, Jared Freed, Mike Callahan, Dave Hogan, Matt Murphy, I already said Matt Murphy, Andrew Bracker, Billy Meisner, David Sheehan, Jake Toffel, Josh Abraham, Albie Alfin, who's unfortunately ineligible for this game, and Matt Hoban. All had a great year, especially the second half. Thank you for your effort this year. Jamie Walker's going to be wrapped up for a loss on that play. And while we have the time, I'd like to thank everyone on the crew that's been out here today in the freezing cold and windy conditions. Wind chill around 5, 10 degrees, especially the camera people we've had out here. Jose LaPointe, Lawrence Hawley, Bob Coleman, Tim Nagel, Josh Eilberg, Ian Markowitz. Some of them doing some cable and spotter duties. We had a great job out here today. Fortunately, we had some technical difficulties, but Happy the crew was able to fix those well. We've had Tamara Green back on the replay. Excellent job. Mark Mandel on the graphics and the audio. And Eric Gazelle is your director today. Great job, guys. And they've done it all season as well. Uh, these replays and with the, I mean, the Brain Tree game, we had some great shots. And we have great shots here today. Uh, really taking a step forward in uh, the technological world. Well, if Needham does have the good fortune to be able to go on to the postseason, it would uh, it'd be a heck of a game against somebody like Acton Boxborough. They're one great team. I think it's going to be, if, if it is, it's Chelmsford, number and four in the state or five in the state. Yeah, Chelmsford, Chelmsford got beat up pretty bad by St. John's Prep last yeah. week, but they're a good team. That was, I believe, Chelmsford's first loss on the year, that loss to St. John's Prep. So they might right, not be a top three team in the state, but definitely an impressive five. squad. They're undefeated in their good. division right now. We see Davis roll out on that play for a gain of around five, and I think Pau Saris is going to have one more punt here. And if we miss to take on Chelmsford, best of luck to them. Newton North, whichever team does move on, and I think it will be Weymouth, if not if not the Rockets here today. Uh, best of luck to them. Should be interesting to see that Weymouth running attack. As we said, uh, I think Bobby Saris, Jason they, Anzalone. Uh, don't know the other ones. They got several great backs yeah. over oh. there at Weymouth. Jojo Camille, the quarterback, also a great runner. Well, with 2.58 left to go, it appears as though the Raiders are going to have a chance to try to get the ball back. It's going to be fourth and almost 20. So uh, uh, we'll see whether or not you know, Coach Tracy and the Raiders can muster some offense there to try to get on the scoreboard. That's exactly what they want to do right now. Looks like Chris Guile will be back in single punt formation on such a silvery field. I'm surprised to see that. You normally have two guys back on something like this so they can spread out the field because it's going to be real difficult to cut may and try go get a, the ball. May try for a block. They're coming after him. Pavaceris gets it away. High, oh, booming dude. punt. Beautiful punt. Bouncing past midfield. Guiles will not pick it up. It rolls down to the 43, actually the 48-yard line. Well, you mentioned earlier when Pavaceris had a tough kick on his first time, you know, that he really has a good foot. He did a terrific job there of doing the right thing and getting a good high kick, taking advantage of the wind, and it knocks the Raiders back into their own territory. Well, he has not had a blocked punt against him this year. I, I don't believe I don't he's believe had he one. has in the last couple of years. I just remember all the... Incredible saves he had last year. He had a couple of bad snaps. Uh, he was against Framingham. He had to sprint out and then punted it 50 yards while sprinting. So uh, he's really had a great career here. Hopefully he can have one more game. Well, we haven't had an update on that Weymouth uh, Waffle game in a while, but at the half it was 14 to nothing. That Weymouth defense shut out Norwood the week before, 7 0. Norwood, one of the most high powered offenses in the league. Last chance for the Raiders. Lusko looking, jumps it. Dumps it out to Guile on a short pass. He struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Getting good coverage there by the Rockets. 
Again, so difficult to be able to pass against this Needham Rocket defense. They're covering the long pass. They're covering the passes underneath. They're putting pressure on the quarterback. This is a team that, if they are fortunate enough to get to the postseason, could give somebody a lot of, lot of difficulty. Reminder, today's game could be Pretty much at this time, you know, Coach Tracy electing to continue to go with the starters to try to be able to get a score on the board. And, and again, it looks like, you know, Coach Duffy going to allow his starters the same way as well. It'd be great to see some of these seniors to be able to get in here the last couple of minutes because it, this one's been decided. You wonder if that Needham team was to go on. I mean, they got the running attack to do it, and uh, their defense has just played unbelievable. Uh, he's got guy out there just a little bit overthrown. Luska, that's probably near his 20th pass of the year. You said he's might have thrown more than he has all year. Haluska didn't play all the games, but like I said, even if you add up all the passes from all the games from all the quarterbacks, you've got probably 50% of the passes for Needham, and you've got probably 120 percent more than you had in the previous games for Wellesley. Well, just also, you know, it's such a tough year for Frank Oluska, the co-captain, getting injured in the, in the second game against Norwood. And again, the Raiders having a lot of injuries. It, it's a shame not to see Chris DeAngelis out here today, number 62, who will be back next year. Plays great on both sides of the ball, but uh, that's kind of part of the game. You know, you have to deal with those. And I know that you guys have had some injuries as well. Third down and nine, Haluska rolls left. He's looking on the left, tipped and batted away by Andrew Brecker, 6'7", 250 senior. Co-captain brings up fourth down and nine. In one of our injuries this year that almost ended up being one of the uh, most devastating losses in a, in a long time was Jamie Walker going down at Weymouth. And the way he was just screaming out in pain, I mean, uh, it was just awful to be carried off the field. But uh, fortunately, he was all right. And that would have been just an awful injury. Albie Alfin also injured. And that took a lot away from the passing game. Against Norwood, we saw them go deep more than once to Albie Alfin who is ineligible for today's game. See Greg Shag check in once again for Andrew Brecker. He's going to be right up on the line there. Get some experience. Say he played in the Thanksgiving game right on the defensive line. Th fourth down and nine. Motion on the play. Full starts. You can see also J.R. Terrio has made it out in the field. Michael Leonard now playing linebacker. Procedure penalty against the Raiders. Referees will march it back. It will be fourth down at 14, minute 49 to go. Boy, when it's going right, when it's going bad, it's going bad. And again, uh, trying to get uh, something happen here on fourth and uh, and 15. We'll see what the uh, the defensive setup will be for the Rockets. But you got to believe that those linebackers are just going to come right after them here. So here it is for Haluska. Got. A little different formation out there. He fakes it to the running back. Back to pass over the middle. Incomplete. Drop that time. Uh, Chris Geek across Chris the Geek. middle there. And I was saying, we've been looking for the tight end all year long. And Geek is a terrific tight end. Throwing a little bit behind him there. And I think even if he caught that, I'm not sure he would have had the yardage for the first down. But, uh, you know, a spirited effort by a Wellesley Raider team that had a lot of injuries this year. They'll fall to four and seven there. Great to see Bill Mahar here, who had a terrific year with the uh, the JV team, undefeated. A big win against the Raiders, and uh, Needham will go one and three this year with the uh, the JV, the varsity, and the Powder Puff winning. And uh, the only victory for the Raiders this year was the fresher team, as you pointed out, a great come from behind win. Needham has cleared the bench a little bit. They've got their second string offense. Robbie Bailey is out there. Wide receivers: Jake Toplin, Frank Abraham. We've also got Jeremy Grunbaum, second line offensive line in there. Robbie Bailey's had a great year for the JV, running the ball, hands it off to Mazzola up the middle. Not much of a gain on that play. Well, I gotta believe here that if Coach Duffy decided he wanted to take a knee, and just to end this saying that uh, I don't think you see Tracy trying to do anything other than letting this string out, the clock's ticking with 1.30 left to go. And hey guys, you know, but I just wanna say, it's been such a delight to be able to be up here. And every single time, you know, I have a chance to be able to come to do these games. The hospitality is always wonderful. The competition on the field has been great. It's been chilly up here, but it's been uh, it's been great action, great being a part of it. Well, thank you very it's much been, for coming, Chris. Good to have Chris. you here tonight. Center, center. Center. See what he does. He's going to run out the play clock as long as he can. Now he snaps it, hands it off to Mazzola once again. Falls forward for a gain of about one. See Matt Hoban in the game. I'm not sure if you'd have mentioned that one. Uh, I don't think I did. Matt Hoban in. I'm not sure if I, uh, anybody else. Russ Scanlon also in there. Ryan Coyle and Matt Grace have been in there at one point. Hoban now checks out. 
And Matt as Dill. Uh, Matt Dill's coming in to replace Hoban. And uh, Abraham will go out as well. Well, it's been four straight years that the Rockets have uh, have not been victorious in these games, and uh, it's a terrific win by Needham program that uh, looked like at the beginning of the season they would not be in the thick of things, but they're right here at the very end in the carry division. Bailey hands it off to Mazzola, slips and falls. Not not used to the conditions out there exactly, second team offense, but loss of three, and that's going to run out the clock. For the game, the Rockets will win this one 17 to nothing. The all time series now 55 to 51 and nine in favor of Wellesley. But the Rockets win this 2002 matchup by the score of 17 nothing behind the running of Jamie Walker, an excellent game for him today. Jamie Walker all over the field. He was ready to have a big game. He said how much he was looking forward to this, and he ended up running all over the Wellesley Raider defense. Well, I know that Kathy and Jamie Walker are very, very proud of their son, but I know that all parents can be proud of their kids who participated in this game, both on the field, and those who are uh, on the prep teams, and the freshmen, and the sophomores, and the JVs. And uh, you know, both of these teams have a lot of, uh, got a lot of good underclassmen who are going to be very, very important parts of this program in the years to come. So, to Coach Bill Tracy and Dave Duff, you got a lot to be proud of because these kids represented their towns with a lot of pride, very professionally. And hey, it didn't turn out the way that the Rays wanted to this year, but we wish the Needham Rockets all the best. Thank you very much, Chris. Wellesley just couldn't get their game plan going today. Of course, you had that wing T offense. You think you're going to run the ball a lot, running up the middle, running to the sides. They got behind early. They tried passing a lot, and it just couldn't work out the way they wanted it to. And, uh, so Jamie Walker with excellent game, which could be his last game as a senior captain. Leads the Rockets to victory, and I'm sure uh, at least if they don't go to the playoffs, we'll be happy with this victory. Yeah, and now we'll just have to wait and see uh, for Needham. It's you know they did their job, and now they have to see if Walpole did theirs. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they did. Looking at what the score was at halftime and how good that Weymouth defense has been all year. N nevertheless, eight and three, very very impressive record. Matches the same record they had last year in the regular season. It was the same type of season where they started off. And you see them lose two games in a row. They're at one and two, and then at two and three, they pull together six straight wins. It's been it's been a common theme for this team in the past couple of years. So the fans celebrating here at Memorial Field as the Rockets win 17 to nothing. Thank you for joining us on this Thanksgiving Day. Hope you have a pleasant winter sports season. Make sure to catch all the sports on your local Needham or Wellesley channel. For Chris Stevens and Ben Mark, I'm Andrew Argini. Thank you for joining us. Great Final job, score, Needham 17, Wellesley 0.